Hey there, comic book friends. I'm Travis, and it's time for another edition of Comic Book Roundtable. And I have my esteemed guests here um, tonight. Those that I can figure out how to get on, I, I'll be right up front. I've been having a hell of a time with um, the Google Hangouts tonight and Google+. Plus. Normally, I can just easily type in people's names. Their names show up, and I invite them. And most of the panel that's on tonight did not get an invite through the regular invite because it's not working. So I've kind of been halfway working around, and uh, I'm, I'm tired of trying to figure it out. So we're going to go on. Um, and on tonight, we have with us Comics Dot Comics. How's it going, everyone? Jen, a comic book girl, long time no see. Yes. And Mike, Sergeant America, how's it going? Excellent, thank you. I, I survived my parade. That's one of the reasons why we're also late tonight, too. I had to go and stand in the almost rain and the cold and watch people walk up and down the street with lights hanging off of them. Woohoo! <laughs> so, let's let's talk some comic books. Let, let's start out with, with Marvel, because that means I don't have to talk. I can drink my soda while everybody else talks. So, sure. what Marvel books do you guys read? Sarge, you can go first. I only got one. Uh, Death of Wolverine, the Weapon X program. Mm. And uh, um, Comics Mom was talking about this previously also. Uh, it is the continuing story of the, probably the last group of Weapon X people, and they are trying to escape the what's left of the, the government or whoever has done the experiments on them. Uh, it goes in a little bit more in-depth on some of the other characters like Skell, who is a large black male who has this great strength. He's kind of got the uh, Luke Cage feel to him. Uh, he's a football player who had uh, multiple shots in the head from football, so he decides that he'll do this program if it can fix his brain. But uh, evidently, if he doesn't keep using his skill, he gets pl pain flashbacks. So it's a little bit of the explanation on him, and they're going to try and find Sabretooth, because evidently there's a tracker in Sabretooth, and they are going to, they think he's just another victim like him, and so they're going to try and save him. Uh, they quickly find out this person who either has Wolverine memories or Wolverine spirit in them, I'm getting kind of worried about that, um, Mm. keeps hearing, you know, like, don't do not do this. This is Sabretooth. He's dangerous. He's deadly. Just mm. forget all these people. I'll lead you. Uh, but it's an excellent story. It's uh, written by Soul, Charles Soul. Yeah. Uh, the artwork in it's lovely, and I was really scared about the death of Wolverine and all that, but I've really been enjoying this Weapon X program. Yeah, no, I, I would say that I, I was a bit skeptical when I read Death of Wolverine, and it seems like Soul is actually kind of almost revamping Wolverine and making him have a lot more nuance to him as a character, and I'm liking that a lot. Uh, but one one thing I do have a problem with, in the death of Wolverine, Sabretooth almost just makes a cameo, and he seems far less dangerous than he should have been. He's literally brought in towards the end of an issue, and then things happen, and he's gone. So I was wondering if they were going to bring him back later, but I, I think... I mean, I don't like the idea that they're doing a weekly for Wolverines, I think is what it's called. Yeah. But I mean, I'm liking what Soul is doing with Wolverine, kind of giving him that nuance and depth instead of just making him, he's angry, therefore he's, you know, edgy. I, I, I like what he's doing. Speaking of Wolverines, is anybody here going to get that? The weekly Marvel book? <sighs> I'm getting more and more likely because I'm, I think I'm even picking this up. It almost seems like it's coming out every week. Yeah. Or it's this, and then there's you know the individual Wolverine books where it's like Sabretooth, Weapon X, Mystique. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think they're all Charl or they're all Soul. So I'm starting yeah. to think, you know, if they're all this good, I'm probably going to go back and buy them. So. Well, what worries me though is I'm reading this that he's also uh, doing. Oh. Mm -hmm. yep. I, I kind of wanted them, when he, he signed that exclusive contract with Marvel, to get like a rogue book or something like, you know, something that... Because he took uh, Swamp Thing, who was doing all right with Snyder. Do, it was an all right book. I don't think anyone would say it was bad when Snyder was on it. But he turned it into something completely different. And I thought they should give him one of them fringe books that, you know, it went, like they did with DC and let him just go wild on it. You don't... You like, don't yeah, but you don't sign an exclusive with somebody and then put them on. 
on well, no, non money makers. No, but what I meant was he would do Wolverine, he would do this, and then it's Charles Soule. <laughs> he would do that too, you know what I mean? He's doing letter forty four still too. Yeah, but that was part of that was part of why he took the why he took the um exclusive was mm -hmm. because it was solid gear, it was solid money doing less projects so he could do more other things that he wants to do mm -hmm. that aren't the mainstream comic thing was my understanding from reading his letter to fans as to why he was doing the exclusive with Marvel as opposed to continue to work on the DC books and stuff. Yeah. I so, think he's got I think he's got more indie books he wants he wants to do. Which so. would which I, I wouldn't be mad at, but I think there are some yeah. characters in Marvel that he could have a lot of fun with. Oh, for I'm sure. sure for sure. For sure. I foolishly I've signed up for the Mar for the um, Wolverine weekly. I haven't gotten Whoa. any of these Death of Wolverine books. None of them. Got none of them. Wow. But I decided, you know what? I'm 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 setting on a weekly um, you know, weekly DC book. Ah, I'm gonna see what this is like. So I will be getting at least three months worth of um, wow. Wolverine weekly book before I can jump back off. So, but everybody <laughs> keeps talking about how great these Wolverine books are that um Charles Souls is writing, and it's what him and and Ray Fox. So I think between the two of them. Hopefully we'll get something cool, especially wow. if they're gonna, especially if they're gonna redo Wolverine. You know, if they're gonna make him into something cooler than I think he has been here recently, so we'll Marvel's see. I may be hating myself. I may be two weeks into it, and I may be going, I'm spending how much you know mother effing money on, yep, and then I'm gonna hunt down, a, I'm gonna hunt down um, comic book mom Audrey and um, <laughs> and and Mike there and knock their heads together for making me think I should be getting it because they keep talking about how great it is. Punk. So. Yeah, I, I mean, you're brave, but I thought at least if I'm gonna check that out at all, it'd be in trade. There's yeah. But, but see, well, I don't think it's gonna I'm be. Lucky. I don't think it'll be written in a fashion that trades how you're gonna want to read it. Yeah. Because I, I, cause I'll, you know, just like just like Batman Eternal, I'm having fun reading it as a weekly book. Yeah. And, you know, if I picked up a, 18 issue trade of it, I don't know that I would enjoy it. Well, that's what you're killing me on because that was my game plan. I picked it up right through the first trade, uh, and then I was just gonna go from there. Sure. And everyone's making it sound like that was a poor choice. Well, and I just think it. I don't think it's written like like say the 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 the, the book fifty two that came mm -hmm. out a few years ago. It's not written like that. That read well in trade because that's how I read it and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And then maybe I'm wrong. It just seems to me like the way it, it's structured or not structured as the case may be. <laughs> that um, it's gonna be kind of all over the map. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Did you get any other Marvel, or should I just talk about Inhuman? Yeah, go ahead. I, first of all, I don't know if you can see that cover, but that cover is awesome. <laughs> it's Medusa, and she's turned her hair into actual snakes. Yeah. Like it, she's actually Medusa. Well, not actual snakes. You know what I mean. Right. But let's use proper English. But. Uh, it's kind of in the middle of starting a new arc, so there's not a whole lot to really talk about. She is affected by the events of Axis in this. That's why they have the little Axis in the corner. Mm -hmm. And so where the heroes are are bad and the bad guys are good, unlike any other events we've read recently, I am making that video, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, where a billionaire industrialist becomes a hero and a, but uses horrible means to do it. We didn't see that in any kind of events recently either. But, uh, <laughs> it, yeah, there's just not enough there to really talk about. But it, I'm enjoying the book. It's really good. But, I, I, again, I will say it's an acquired taste, so there's my caveat. It, it, they're definitely, I think... You're dead on with the. They're trying to phase out mutants, and these are becoming the new mutants. I think you're. I, wasn't it you, Travis, that made that? Well, that yeah, that seemingly be there was what the plan is. is that, they, yeah. that everything, everything is tied into the Inhumans as opposed to being yeah. mutants. Yeah, yeah. It clearly seems to be the director. They're taking a lot of, a, a lot of the characters. It reads like a late '80s, early '90s X-Men, for sure. That's the best way I would describe it. So if that's your thing, it definitely check out the first trade. I think that's coming out. But not a whole lot to really discuss without spoiling because it's the start of a new arc. No, but but Inhumans has been good all along, right? 
Uh, I wouldn't say that. It consistent all along, but okay. good. Definitely that. I have this weird masochist thing for me when I know there's going to be a movie. I read it just to see how it gets corrupted. I don't know why. You think I would just want to read stuff I like, but that's kind of what I'm doing with this. I did it with Guardians of the Galaxy too. So, well, the few people I know that are reading it all seem to talk good about it. Like they they are they're enjoying it. So. Yeah, I don't have anything bad to say about it, yeah. and I I, 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 I have no. Pr- I look forward to reading. It's usually towards the top when I read stuff. So yeah. Just for that, we're gonna put you down in front of Shield, and you have to watch all the episodes oh. that are inhuman involved. They're they're oh. in that show. Yep. They oh, well, there's no. a city that the Kree has hidden that only some people can touch the magic key to get to the magic city. So, oh, so Superman's in there. Yeah. This is Marvel. <laughs> oh, yeah. sorry. I thought he was talking about the Fortress of Solitude. Yeah. Um, so the, I didn't know they were on the show. So does it have the mist and everything like uh, that too? The, what, what has happened so far is they've uh, indicated there's a blue alien we've seen. They didn't say until this last episode the word Cree. So now they said Cree. They've had an alien writing, which they figured out is actually a map for the city mm-hmm. and the city is hidden and they, they're just starting to investigate where the city is at and they say only certain people who are chosen can touch this key and okay. that can get them into the city and then something big is going to happen. Yeah, because I wouldn't, if I was in charge of that creative, I wouldn't be bringing up the Inhumans at all if you're going to be making a movie. To be honest, I mean, you might hint at them here and there, but I wouldn't show any of them. And so I think that's what they're trying to do is lay out a groundwork, you know, to, you know, they don't have to do mutants. They can start bringing in more interesting people. So I don't know if this is going to get it all set up and then they can bang, hit, and start the Inhumans movie with yeah. well, I, having I, to do the all, you know, origin. I think that's it. what it is. I think that they're just, I think they're, um, I think they're seeding the groundwork for the movie. I, I, I don't think they take that TV show serious. No, it, everyone seems to be a setup for the next movie or some tie-in with a movie. Well, right, it lip services into the next Thor movie or whatever you yeah. got ready to happen. So, oh wow, yeah. so it's it's more of an advertisement than a show, is what you would say. That's yes. what it fe- that's what it feels to me like. I mm-hmm. mean, I don't watch it consistently. I just kind of if I happen to. I'm really bored after I've watched The Flash and I flip it over and it's on. I'll, I'll watch it. And I'll groan as I'm watching it. I have to admit, I, I think I watched two episodes ago and I spent most of the time kind of beating my head against the wall the whole time it was going on. So, Hey, if I didn't have the CW, I would be really happy that that the that Shield is on because it is. It's um, It touches on all the little geek stuff and it was okay until they got to... Uh, the Winter Soldier, because it was all feeding towards that, and then it was yeah. all about Hydra, and so you're like, oh, that was excellent, but it was all build up for the movie, and so this is all kind of, okay, this has been good, and it's all going to feed up for the Inhumans, you're going to say, oh, that show was awesome, but it's a feed for the movie. See, yeah. where I think, and I, you know, I guess I'm kind of putting my DC badge on right now. I think it was smart to DC go, look, these TV shows have nothing to do with our film universe. I think that was actually far more intelligent because, yes. one, you're kind of double dipping. Once you get into the film universe, you can retell this story and then have the Flash TV show going at the same time. Marketing-wise, it's solid and everything because you can say, you like this Flash, check out that Flash versus yeah. just having the show literally just be an advertisement for... I tried watching a couple episodes. I watched the Crusher one where he was oh, introduced. Yeah. And I just felt like they're not even really... Because when they first announced it, didn't they say that Joss was going to be involved heavily and all that? And I was like, well, I love Buffy, so at the very least I can... Yeah. And really that is... It, everything about the movies is holding back S.H.I.E.L.D. And exactly. that's what makes the CW great, is they can do whatever they want, and it doesn't have to touch the movies, so you get these really great peaks in the show because they don't have to hold back. But if anyone's a Marvel fan that's out there, there is still Gotham, so don't. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh. Not that, we're, not that we're picking on Marvel. 
I'm, I'm mm-hmm. not. I mean, I like Marvel. I just, I, I think the way they do this television show is kind of, as you guys are discussing, this is kind of feels backwards to me. And then maybe that's other people have a different perception that it's not, that it, that it doesn't feel like that's what it's doing is it's billing the next whatever. But to me, that's kind of what it, it is kind of what it feels like also is that it's just kind of. Well, and that's what's going to make Netflix even more interesting is what are they going to do with the Daredevil and all the Defenders, and then there's this Defenders mini-movie, and it's all on Netflix. You know, are they going to use that also as an advertisement? Is it going to be really awesome and then I, jump into something? But Have you seen what Daredevil's going to look like? Yes, with the mask, yeah. The Frank but, Miller. What what cracked me up about that is I don't know if I think maybe Travis might be the only one that remembers this, but the Incredible Hulk TV show where they have the TV movie, and they yeah. said Daredevil's gonna be on, and so yeah. you're like, oh hell yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's the exact same thing in this yep. TV show coming up. It's the yep. same look and everything, and I just remember being so bummed out by that. You yeah. know, Hulk's gonna be Daredevil, and it's. Ninja, well, I, I don't know. I have hopes. I still have hopes for the Netflix produced yeah. stuff because it yeah. feels so separate. It really feels separate. I mean, maybe it's not, but it feels separate in its own way. The way it's going to be produced, the way it's going to come out. Um, it's. I, I, it would be awfully hard for them because it's not a serialized thing that's slowly chunking along, right? It's all going to just get dumped at one time, right? Because that's how yeah. Netflix releases Think the so. stuff. Yeah. So if they just dump it all at once, they aren't going to be able to set up for the movie, or I don't think. I don't know that it's going to be able to do that in the same way. Yeah. So, hopefully that makes it something else. When do those come out? Do we have any idea? It, it, I don't know. It's one of the few reasons why I'm holding on. No, I'm just kidding. I love Netflix, but uh, soon? I, I, I know Daredevil is probably going to come out first, I think, isn't it? Yes. I, yeah. Because I haven't heard much about the other... What are the other two shows, or is it just... Uh, No, it's three. It's Jessica Drew, or, um, you know, the... Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones, thank you. Uh, Luke Cage, and then Iron Man. Or Iron Fist. Iron Iron Fist. Fist. Iron Fist, I actually might be interested in checking out, but... Yeah, and then they're going to do... All of them sound interesting to me. I just... I thought they were going to have The Rock play Luke Cage. Anyway... (laughs) No, it's uh, D'Onofrio, though. So I think oh, that would really? be... Yeah, Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah. Uh, and then there is a Defenders movie they're doing with it, too, where they can join them all together. See, what they need to do is give Luke Cage to The Rock and then have someone else do the Shazam movie. Anyway. We I'm, talk- okay. I'm, o- I'm, okay with, I'm okay with The Rock being um, Black Adam. That's fine by me. The Rock. Come on. Anyway. Whatever the hell his name is. I don't know what his name is. It's Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne. Yeah. Okay. Mr. But, uh, Johnson. That's also why it's not really tied in with the rest of the DC. You? Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I like that aspect, actually, because Captain Marvel, Shazam, whatever you want to call him, for a long time was considered in a separate... They were the universe. universe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, even after DC bought them, when they wrote the books, they were still kind of in their own little... Mm-hmm. I think until I think until about the point somebody thought, wow, wouldn't it be cool, you know, if the big cheese and Superman fought? Wouldn't that be awesome? No. Yeah. And then they, and then they then had they, to go back in for recess. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I liked them in Kingdom Come though. I read that. I enjoyed yeah. that. I'm so, I'm such a wise ass tonight. I better just shut up. Clearly. <laughs> okay. So anything else going on with Marvel? We want to talk about any news? Anything else? We uh, Shield talk- is all on TV. So I. I is that news? Yeah, I, I always think it is. Uh, I don't know. Did they announce anything else comic book-wise recently? Uh, nope. Agent Carter is coming on over the break. Oh, for the- oh. I know. What, yeah, Agent Carter's coming on. I'm actually kind of interested in that because it's set back in, yep. clearly in her own time, back when you know Captain mm-hmm. Rick was first coming up and stuff. That's cool. The other, the other Marvel news, for those of you who care about way in the future movies, they have signed Cumberbatch on to be... Um, um, Doctor Strange. Hmm. I, I think he'll do fine at it. I mean, I think there's lots of other people they could have had to do the job too, but I think he's he's weird enough that he'll be he'll be great. Here's my thing. I'm hoping that means we're gonna get a Doctor Strange comic book because I really want a Doctor Strange comic book. I want to spend some time in the in the um, supernatural and magical part of Marvel because there's not a whole lot there. 
My only issue is, is I want it to be its own thing. I don't want it to be either a primer for a movie or just reflects whatever the movie script's going to be. I want it to be a serious comic book, and I don't know, is that going to happen? Well, no, know. okay. Just think, just think back like 10, 15 years. If you were to ask who had the better mystical universe, Marvel or DC, you're going to say Marvel every time. Now I can't necessarily say that. I think Tomb of Dracula, Werewolf by Night, Doctor Strange. There are a few DCs, but I would say Doctor Strange is pretty well known compared to all the other ones. Okay, name someone who's more well known. From DC. Doctor from DC, that's, doc that's magic. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There probably isn't Zantana? anybody that's more well known. Yeah, Zantana is pretty. Is is, but yeah, you're probably right. And they I think just DC. Kind of I think like... DC. I think DC has a lot more magical people, though. A lot more yeah. magical and occult people. I, I mean, I. I yeah. can name a lot more of them than I can. Yeah, but I Marvel, mean, but... he's he's. If you want to have a mystical universe in Marvel, he should be out front. Sure. He should be the head guy, and they haven't really had him in anything for a long time. I think you get the guy. I can't think of his name. The guy that did Batgirl. No, Batwoman. You get him on the art. J.H. Williams III? Mm. Yeah, oh, you get wow. him on art. <laughs> We're writing this right now. You get him yeah, on art. That'd be awesome. <laughs> and you get, I don't know. Who would you have write that, though? I don't know. Soul, he's already exclusive, and you want him on something <laughs> interesting. There, there you go. That works. Well, and I wonder, are we getting the new Avengers version of Doctor Strange, or are we going to get the old, you know, uh, Stanley Hori host of mystical, you know, is he going to be really out there, or is he going to be the everyday David Copperfield magician? Right, that's a good question, because he's kind of been all over the map at one point or another, right? I mean, in the last run of the actual Defenders that Matt Fraction was writing, he was in that, but he was kind of, he was the older kind of, you know, yeah. a, a large portion of his brain operated in a completely different realm than everybody else kind of a thing, so he was always kind of there, well, I, but not there. You know, he was he was not there all the time. So I don't we're know. gonna we're gonna get an origin for sure. They they oh, have okay. to have that. So it's gonna be the surgeon. It's gonna be you know he's he's a bit you he has a bit of a hubris about him. Yeah. Get in the accident. So wherever they go from there, I have no idea. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll wait and see. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. We're done with Marvel. Let's go on to DC, shall we? All right. We, we read a few of those. So mm -hmm. what, what what do we want to talk about first? Secret Six. Let's just talk Secret Six. Let's get that. Let's jump right on that because I know that's what everybody's. And of course, for me, for me personally, super well, two sides to it. Super excited and also very afraid. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, the first vol, well, second volume. I take it back. Second volume of Secret Six um, is like one of my favorite runs of all time. I I own original art stuck up on my wall from the book. It literally is one of my favorite comic books. Is in that run. So. Yay, Secret Six is back, and oh my god, are they going to be able to recapture this magic? You know, they're using the same writer, which makes me even more nervous, to tell you the truth, that <laughs> we're going to retread some water that isn't going to work, and what's going to happen. So, what do you guys think? No, you're not going to get the same genie in the bottle, but I am already more happy than Batwoman and Suicide Squad. Well, that's a... That's not comparing it to much, but okay. <laughs> no, that's where me coming into it, you know, I did read at least the first half of The Secret Six, uh, getting the, the Get Out of Hell Free card, which I loved all that, oh, yeah. and I have not read some of the later issues of that. But for me, um, I liked the grouping. I liked the, the artwork I thought was nice. I, it was not spectacular, but I, I did like it for what it was. And so far, I mean, each person I felt had a unique enough taste compared to some of the other ones I've read recently where it, it, they weren't writing for the person, they were writing just team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think everybody had a unique voice, and I, and I, I as of right now, like it. I kind of worried about that because, I mean, if you weren't familiar with some of these characters before, I'm not sure that it drew you into them. But it's the first issue, so, you know. Yeah, yeah I mean, agreed. I'm not it's, worried about that. Yeah, it's kind of the first issue's told more 
more from a, a Catman perspective than mm -hmm. anybody else, right? Would we agree that it's got more information on him? I would assume as we go along, we're going to get we're going to get more on those other those other people. But I think Mike's right in the sense that anytime anybody opened up their mouth, they had their own words and they felt like somebody different than everybody else. And and That's certainly true. lately, we've read lots of group books where any, anybody could be saying the words. It doesn't matter which character it is. I mean, the, the little bit that Black Alice talks in here, you know, she's got her own personality, her own kind of whatever. Um, the I draw a blank on the big guy. Oh, I don't Mike, remember. Mike, what's his name? Either. Something. Mike, I don't remember what it is. Something big. I'm drawing a blank mm -hmm. on his name, Ruffhead. You know, he big clearly had. What was it? Oh yeah, big shot or. Uh, yeah, I think some, it's like big shot, something like that. So, but anyway, he seems to certainly have a voice. I, I think, um, you know, Sticks has a voice because she doesn't have a voice. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was curious the person that, um, oh, I don't know. No. I can't remember what her name was. There's one person that's a new person I'm not familiar with at all. Was that Porcelain? Porcelain, thank you. Yeah, and she I was created. Just for this, I think. And yeah. I think she, I think they did a really interesting thing with the dialogue there, and the fact that Camp Man, I'm assuming they're kind of implying that he has some senses about him. You know, he can smell things about people, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. I mean, maybe not to let, maybe not Wolverine level, but something. He calls Porcelain a he, and mm -hmm. of course, one of the other characters corrects him and says that that's a she, dude. And she then says. You know, don't don't say something you can't take back. So does that imply mm -hmm. that that she's trans? Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that I well I with the if she's this costume person wearing the glittery mm -hmm. um, the glittery bowler hat and the pink uh, mask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would be inclined to think that probably that's probably what yeah. they mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. uh, with. Black Alice. Who is the one in Batwoman? What's that Alice? That's Alice. That's Elizabeth. That's um. Right. That's she's she just goes by Alice. Okay. Um. That's that's Kate Kane's sister. Mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth. Whereas and I just didn't know if there was any connection with those uh, two. So. No. Right. Whereas whereas Black Alice has the ability to take on as you see in here she talks backwards. Yeah. Like she can channel any magic person. Okay. Their powers. She kind of takes on their semblance, at least the old Black Alice used to take on some of their semblance. So like she could literally become Black Lightning if she wanted to. She'd get a, like a Black Lightning bolt down her chest and you know, or, or Mary Marvel and right. she could go to town like them or she could be Felix Faust or right. a lot of a lot of people like that. So um, right. the the artwork I actually liked um, I know there are people out there we've talked to on Twitter who absolutely hate the artwork. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think I think the coloring could have served it better. Um, yeah. I think Jen brings up a good point in that there's there's um, the the penciler inks some of his own work and somebody else inks some of it. So I don't know where that inconsistency is at. But I like the panel work. I thought I thought sure. I thought the, that storytelling aspect of it was was decent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I liked even the little touches like the mask. I mean, it's things like that when you're making a team book that I think is pretty nice. That it starts to create, you know, you know that they're forced to a certain, you know, sense, and we don't want them fighting the entire time. So the more things they do to speed it along and make them join together, I think I like that part of the pacing of the book too. But I kind of felt like whoever's done this to them doesn't want them working together. Right. I think they want. Yeah. I think they want to watch them die off. Does anyone else think Strix was made strictly be off of her getting off of Gail Simone getting stuff on Twitter written to her? <laughs> what do you mean? That what do you she's, mean? How she writes and everything. How it's like. Phonetic and some and like horribly spelled and all that. I like I kill people. Yeah, like <laughs> I hate you. You know, like that. It just reminds me of like every once in a while when you get hate comments on Twitter. Like <laughs> people just have no idea how to. Like I almost wonder if that's where she got the inspiration for it. That's funny. 
But could be. You know, I, I would say on the art, it, it is a little inconsistent, but I, there wasn't... You know what it is? There was no Task Force XL in this. <laughs> oh, thank you, God. Yeah. There was nothing yeah. in there when I was reading it where I was like... Your eyes I didn't rolled print. Your head. Yeah. Right. And so for me to go... The, like, okay, Wonder Woman, you read issue one of Wonder Woman, I was done. With this, I kind of want to know what's going on. What's, what's going to happen next? Well, yeah, I wanted the rest of the story right now. I mean, yeah. now, I, I, now, comparing it to the last volume of Secret Six, I think the original, the initial story in the, in the, the last run was more interesting and compelling to me. Mm -hmm. The idea of there being this get-out-of-jail-free, get-out-of-hell-free card, that's just a fascinating concept. I really like that. This one was... Felt more like the throw it together with no mm -hmm. rhyme or reason kind of a thing. So I'm hoping, really hoping that like the next issue or so, we're given a reason. That it's not simply that there's some sick bastard out there that wants to fry a few, mm -hmm. you know, odd odd named villains or antiheroes. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm hoping there's some other logic to it than that. Because if there isn't, why do they stay together? You know, yeah. What's what keeps them together? I, I, so I'm hoping there's something else as as far as that goes. Um, you know, I will agree with you as far as the art that it's inconsistent in places, but I like the way each character is drawn. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, the ventriloquist, her being this kind of she looks really out, decrepit, worn out, skeezy kind of looking kind of a thing. You know, she's kind of clearly off her rocker, thinking that she's mm -hmm. the triple threat when she's emaciated, and she, I mm -hmm. think she's supposed to be grosser. I don't think she's supposed to be pretty looking because the other women are drawn in here nice looking. I mean, they're mm -hmm. not, you know, she obviously has got, you know, and I guess I like the art because it has a style. I can see where where um, you said, um, comics to comics, that you said that it seemed Gilliam March to you like. Yeah. And I think that's more of the color. The color and the inking kind of have that kind of a, that kind of a style to it. Gilliam March is more... It's consistent, though. But now, yeah. Travis, you said this was like the third incarnation. Are you considering the first uh, Villains United? No. All right. No, I'm, I'm sorry. What I'm calling the three, uh, for me, I'm saying three. This is the third volume. The first volume was in the late 1960s. Mm -hmm. um, it's the original. It's the first one. It, um, The Secret Six, it's like seven or 12 issues was the most it ever was. It has these wonderful, great psychedelic covers, and and they're, they're super spies that their boss is called Mockingbird. They never know who their boss is, and their boss sends them out on these crazy pants missions and whatnot, which is kind of where the next, then, for me, what I'm calling the next volume, because I know there was a miniseries, right? There was mm -hmm. like a six-issue miniseries that spun out of Villains United. All right, yeah. Then, then what I would call number two, and I don't know how, like, the catalogs, maybe they're calling it three, I don't know. Um, then, of course, is Gail Simone's first run on the book, which was two, and this is three. Or do they call that United thing? If they're calling that... That's volume. Yeah, this is the fourth They're calling volume. that two? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, cor I'm correct on that. that that's, the, that's the case. Um, so, as a whole, I liked it. I mean, I, I, I can see the complaint in, in the art. Um, I, I think that what little bit we got of the characters are interesting. Yeah, we need to know a lot more about a lot of these characters. I mean, I know some of them are from past experience, but, um, well, but, I guess that's what I'm, I'm wondering then, do you feel that just before the card was another Secret Six that kind of got the team together so that when Simone was writing the card episodes or issues, it, it already was really flowing well, and that yeah. kind of helped. Yeah, but they also, had, that group had other things in common, though, too. They were all kind of washed up villains. Right. They all decided to work together because they all wanted to keep making money. Um, right. I mean, that was, I mean, from the very beginning, that book had a reason for them to all be hanging out. Mm -hmm. The only reason there is to hanging out with these people is they're in a, an extra large coffin and yeah. they're. At the bottom of the ocean. In the bottom <laughs> of the ocean, supposedly. They're being tortured and they've got to answer a secret, they've got to answer a riddle, or, or pick somebody to die. That, See, yeah, and to me, that doesn't create a good long-term team book unless no. they're all really... I mean, if you put the Justice League in this situation before they were the Justice League, they would come out of it being a superhero team because they're good and righteous people at the end of the day, mm -hmm. right? 
Yeah. These people clearly aren't good and righteous people. One's clearly a psychopath, you know, the ventriloquist. Um, you know, Catman's out partying and having a good time. I don't really know about the others. You know, um, Black Alice is a goth girl, doesn't really care whether she lives or dies. And I mean, so I don't know that there's a motivation to glue them together other than being yeah. they're in a really crappy place. So I just I get concerned with this kind of a storyline long term, why do these people stay together? And I'm hoping Gail answers for us. I will say this, I'm really happy. This book did not feel flat to me. And to be mm -hmm. quite honest, I love Gail. I think she's great. But I have to say the last couple of books that I have read of hers to start out with have landed flat for me. And I stuck with them because they're Gail. But like the the canceled, now canceled 99% book, what the heck, The Movement. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah. That book just never worked for me. So... Do you think it's in her plotting or in her dialogue? Um, with, the movement, with the movement, it was everything. I, I think her dialogue at times doesn't work for me. Uh, sometimes she'll just have a, a character say something and it doesn't seem consistent with the character. It seems like it's a good, like, punchy line to throw in there to kind of, oh, that's kind of funny or that kind of moves the plot, but it'll kind of go against the grain of the character itself. Mm. Well, see, that wasn't that wasn't a problem with me for the movement because first issue we I know who none of those people are so they can't say something inconsistent to me mm -hmm. yeah. so you know um, I just think that story was told in an odd way but I, I guess you're right I never felt that way with the Secret Six because she she had all the characters down and pigeoned to what they do they all had mm -hmm. their purpose so yeah uh, I was also a little amazed by how well the the cover paper was. I, I yeah, I thought that too. Yeah, it's slick, nice, it hard, high quality. Get on it, Marvel. <laughs> well, I picked up a couple other DCs, and I mean, when I grabbed this one, I was just like amazed compared to the others. That mm -hmm. it, it just well, seemed yeah. like they really went for quality on this. It, yeah, I mean, like the Swamp Thing is not as stiff and slick and shiny as what the Secret mm -hmm. Six is. That is interesting. And look. It's a number one book, and the price tag on it is two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. <laughs> how does that work? I, I, how do they do it? I don't know. I don't know. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. But well, so I, I guess to some degree, we all agree that we all liked Secret Six as a whole. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, T. Sorry, T. She's there. T says, you know, yeah, that she's not familiar with the Secret Six, so it it, it felt re uh, really disconnected from the. She felt really disconnected from the characters. You know, mm -hmm. hopefully, you know, she'll enjoy it more once she read the old series. And then it was a really good point that each character did kind of have their own voice. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, T, reading the old one isn't going to. I don't know, make a bit of difference with this with this but, one. But do read the old one. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> read the really? old one. Yeah, for that, everybody out there, if you haven't read it, you read it. At least get the first trade. Well, I don't know how hard it is to get the first trade. If you can get, pick up the first arc, it's it's great. You know, the premise of the arc is they're all together, and there's a a get out of, supposedly a metaphysical literal card that gets you out of hell. So when you die, and your soul is going to go to hell, you can save your soul, and everybody finds out about it. So you have literally every B-rate villain on the entire world is coming to get them to try and get the card. And you never know whether or not they have the card for real or not. So, And also a really, really good bad guy in there. I mean, probably one of the best written baddies, Junior. Junior? Bad gal? Bad it? Whatever she is. Oh, that's, um, I was also going to say, Travis, you know, you can always get this digital. <laughs> what? Just letting you know, digital. <laughs> It, there's what? always a copy digital. Uh, I, 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 I don't find that very funny. But uh. <laughs> Before you go and buy it digitally, get a hold of me and let me know. I will help you out if I can. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, jeez. What am I going to talk about now as I try to hold down my bile? Did you, did, are, you done with, did, are you done getting Earth 2? I did not get Earth 2. I have not been happy with it, so this was the first month I did not get it. This might be it for me, because I wanted to see... Uh, do I hold them up? Uh, sure. <laughs> there we go. There they are. You can look them up online and see what they look like. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I've always wondered why we do that. 
But uh, mm-hmm. I guess just to give it a visual element when we're making these videos. Sorry to get behind the... the it's safer to there. see my face, that's yeah. why. But uh, I was just wondering how they were going to structure it, so I wanted to give it an issue or two, or two, and this is the second one really kind of in the thick of World's End, and they're doing exactly what I thought they were going to do. So instead of having the Barbara Gordon, Dick Grayson story in World's End, they have a whole issue of Earth 2. So what they're going to do every month, at least as of right now, is take a chunk out of World's End, take a story out of it, and just tell it in one big issue of Earth 2. So essentially it's just a supplemental to the weekly. And that's not good in my opinion, because I think the weekly has some good aspects to it. But I don't think it, it's nearly as good as the last run as Earth 2. Of Earth 2, I should say. And it's really sad, because Earth 2 was one of DC's best books. And I w- it was one I recommended to people. And I know what's going to happen, because I'm reading Future's End. So, I mean, anyone who's reading Future's End knows exactly the plot to this. We don't know where some of the characters end up, necessarily. I don't know where Thomas Wayne Batman ends up. I don't know where some of the... I... I'm trying to think of who else... Characters that are almost incidental in that sense. So I think if you're not reading Future's End and you kind of liked Earth 2, it's for you. And so that small piece of the pie, maybe there's a comic for you. But other than that, I don't know anyone that would like this. The art's okay. (laughs) Is that enough Mm -hmm. of a rant? Yeah. (laughs) But Earth 2 essentially became a supplement to a weekly book, which is so fascinating to me because I think... The weekly should be supplemental to the main book. I think they should have been completely separate from the get-go, and I think everyone agrees on that. But mm-hmm. it's a big Earth too. There's several characters that you could they could have had some completely different characters be in the weekly that are new to the universe of Earth two and just kept Earth two going, and then maybe had them collide here or there to combine sales. I'm not stupid. I know why they're doing it, but it it did bother me. But yeah. I think I'm done. Yeah, I, I that's that's for me. I just it felt like that you can't have one without the other kind of a thing. Very okay. w- and enjoy it very well. I mean, I've been told that that's not the case, but I, to me, it felt that way. That if you didn't, if you weren't, if you weren't kind of getting both, you were missing out on part of. Um, well, anyone who's telling you that, last week's weekly said to get the continuation of this story, pick up Earth Two. <laughs> and at the end of this, it said continued in a World's End. I think it did. But I know in the last issue of World's End, it said you had to read this to get the, more of the story. Yeah, I, like I said, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yep, continue the World's End nine. So you see, have, that, to pick, you right, have to pick up one or the other. And, it, and that shouldn't be the case. You can't hamstring a, a, a monthly book to mm-hmm. a weekly book. It doesn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What you do is you have the monthly book take place after the events of it, and then you're. <laughs> Yeah, great. It just recaps. That's all it is, is a recap of the weekly book. Uh, yeah. No, it's great, because now I don't have to read Eternal. I know what's going to happen, so I'm set. Yeah. For all uh, you yes. reading Batman out there. Yeah. Yeah. So what else did you read, Jen? I read Grayston. Oh, cool. Let's talk Grayson. Oh, you're like me. You got the... I, I got this cover. I mean, I did get some Darwin Cook covers, but I like this mm. cover better than the Darwin Cook cover. It actually. looks cool. Yeah. I liked this issue. I really love this issue. It was a very good issue. I'm really loving Grace, and I'm surprised. I expected it to kind of fall flat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's far better than Nightwing was. Oh, yes, mm-hmm. definitely. Uh, <laughs> I would say this is probably one of the few good things to come out of Forever Evil, to be honest. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm, I'm confused by that whole coming out of Forever Evil thing, though, and, and that still bugs me about the book. Um, what do you mean? Well, okay, so they all know he's Dick Grayson, so they all yeah. know he's Nightwing, so they all know he didn't die. If Spiral's trying to get everybody's secret ID, why are they messing around with him being a spy? Why don't they just strap him down and hook some super nasty gadget up to him and pull all the information out of him. What clearly, I'm wondering. clearly he was Nightwing. Everybody knows Nightwing is like Batman's best buddy. If they wanted Batman's yeah. ID and everything confirmed, why are, I don't understand that. I enjoy everything else about this book, but I do not understand that part of it. It just it confuses me. Because the book started out with it seeming like no one knew who he was. 
See, what I thought it was, I, I thought it was a little more nefarious than that. I thought they were going to kind of run them ragged, kind of tire them out, kind of like Bane and Nightfall, send him on these death-defying missions over and over again so that the, he gets to a point where he can't fight back. I think I'm wrong, but I, that's what I thought they were going to do with it because I agree with you. At first, I thought that he had established a new identity when he joined uh-huh. Spiral because he was spying for Batman to kind of see what they were up to. In a way, I thought it was we were getting the story we didn't get with Justice League of America, where we have this sub, subversive nature trying to counteract the superheroes of yeah. the Justice League, and that's kind of what we're getting. I mean, that that has nothing to do with the overall plot of this, but that's what spirals. It kind of seems what they're up to. Yeah, gorgeous art, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is beautiful. I mean, it's simple but very effective because they can. You know, they're stuck out in the desert, 200 miles from the closest city, and they're going to walk on foot. Three people and a, and a brand new baby just born are going to walk out of this place. And I love how, you know, there's just a few panels on each page. It tells the story well, but it maintains this very out-in-the-middle-of-nowhere, lost, desolate kind of thing that it is. Um, really, really cool. I really liked um, Midnighter in this. You know, mm-hmm. him just insisting that he's going to kick everyone's ass, and him fading. Uh-huh. Because, you know, it just didn't work mm-hmm. out the way because he doesn't picture that as being part of the whole what, way it all is and whatnot. I, I really, I, I like this issue a lot, and um, I've kind of well, enjoyed Grayson all along. But yeah. this, to me, this issue was was fabulous. What mm-hmm. I liked about this is it got kind of allegorical in a sense too, where Midnighter essentially became Grayson's doubt, and it, it was him kind of mm-hmm. trying to overcome the doubt. And I liked that Midnighter kind of manifested the doubt because throughout this, even though we know it's a comic book, even though we know that the good guy at the end of the day is gonna, you as you were reading this, I don't care who you were, you had doubts for a second there. You were like, I don't know mm-hmm. if they're gonna get out of this, and it. I think that's good writing when you can step out of those things because you, if you just looked at it at face value, Grayson's getting out of this. There's no way he's getting out of this. But as I was reading this, I was like, this guy's dead, and so is this baby. Mm. And I did a fantastic job of that. And well, if it I, takes you in like that, right? I was. Sure, I mean, I knew at the end of the day, clearly, Dick Grayson's not going to be dead by the end of the issue mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. But what condition is he going to be in? Who's going to be left? Is mm-hmm. the baby going to die? You know, there's all mm-hmm. that stuff. Lots of horrible stuff could happen in this, enough to keep you going, is this it? Is this where they're going to, you know? Yeah. You know, at, you know, at what point do they sacrifice the baby for water? I mean, you know, at, at what point do, you know, all this kind of stuff. How could have been crazy? You know? <laughs> if it just went super dark That's like right. that. Holy. <laughs> yeah. You know, um... You know, so I mean, it was that, and of course, there's this kind of weird ending. I mean, are we ever going to see that mm-hmm. baby again? You think? I don't know. Or is that just one of those things? Someday, somewhere. Yeah, I, uh, maybe I'm way out there on this one. I had a little bit of Wonder Woman vibe to it. You know, like he's trying to protect this baby. It kind of took me back to that a little yeah. bit too. I like that. Yeah. Well, the well, baby because, crushes because that mid- phone. Right. Because yeah. Midnighter's right. Midnighter's saying, "Look, just give me the kid. I'll I'll take care of the kid. We'll get rid of the kid." Because they're gonna hard the kid. Because the kid has a, this. The super organ in it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and so, you, you know, he's kind of saying, "Look, you're gonna take him back to Spiral, and Spiral's gonna. What do you think they're gonna do with the baby? You know, are they gonna split the baby open and take the heart, or are they gonna mm-hmm. strap the baby in a, you know, in an aquarium somewhere? You know, I mean, the baby's not gonna be able to be a baby, clearly. Mm-hmm. You know, and so they kind of take things into their own hand. I'm real curious though because um, it's interesting. Because this wasn't just a Grayson um, decision, right? Yeah. It, it involves um, Huntress. It, it involves Hel- Helena Bertinelli. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, we, she survived this whole outing, too. And she could spill the beans. You know, because at the end of it, they're saying they don't know what happened to the baby. You know, the baby died. Sure. So she obviously is invested in the baby, too. Ah, it's interesting. Like I said, mm-hmm. I'm, enjoy- I'm enjoying the book. Uh, it was one of those books I picked up doubting that I was going to like it at all. And... Um, I've been happy with it. Yeah. As a whole. Well, let's see. What else do you want to talk about? Um, anybody read Gotham Academy? Yes. I didn't get it yet, but okay. go ahead. Well, only briefly talk about it then. Um, issue number three, what would you think, Mike? Uh, it's interesting that it's going in a 
magic sort of way. It, where... it feels even more Harry Potter to me than ever before. Yes. So I wasn't, you know, when it went that way, you know, at least now we got an idea what they're going to do with it, I think. You know, more so than previously. The other couple issues, I had no idea what's going on. Um, they didn't really explain with Olive, like, what the issue with the flames was. And right. I'm, I'll probably read it one more time, and I'm not entirely sure that I'm going to continue along. I'm done. I mean, I'm, I'm going to get a few more issues, clearly, because of the way I order. But um, I don't think it's a bad book. It's no. got some interesting things to it. I, I just find the only thing that's really having me hang on at all is the the Gotham part. Mm -hmm. um, Gotham is what is what the you know they keep throwing out these old Cobblepot names and whatnot, which I have I have an interest in because I yeah. like Gotham as a whole. I like the breathing entity that is Gotham, and so anything that they add to that, I'm I'm always curious about. Um, but that's really not what the book is about. That that's that's the the window dressing of these of these kids. And when I say it feels very, very Harry Potter, it, it just does to me. The, the The storytelling of it seems that way too. These kids all dislike each other. Now they kind of like each other. Or they're working together. They all fit these little kind of niches in a school or high school. And I understand those stereotypes exist to some degree. They certainly did when I was going to school. But they almost feel too on the nose here. I, I'm not a big Harry Potter fan. I like it fine. My family read the books and loved it. I could care less. Um, <laughs> And so I know I'm horrible. I like the movies, mm -hmm. but anyway, um, I just it doesn't have whatever I'm looking for. Like I said, I, I think it's an entertaining book. To be quite honest, once I get enough of them, a stack of them, I'm sure my um, my 13 year old daughter will love this. She'll think it's great. You know, I think I like maps. I like the character maps that's in this. She's a great character, um, but just not not engrossing to me at all. Um, and I'm okay with that. I, like I said, I just don't think it's a book that's that's geared towards me, and it's geared enough away towards me. I can't that I'm not I'm not engrossed. I guess. I I dropped it after the first issue, and I it wasn't that I thought it sucked. It was more or less what you're saying. I felt like this is not I'm not in the audience for this book. It, there's elements I liked about it. I, there was elements of the art I didn't like necessarily, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it just. I wouldn't tell anyone not to read it if they were interested in it, but it just wasn't for me. Right. Like I said, I actually think it's a it's a decent book. I don't think it's poorly written. I don't, I don't think it's greatly written, but it's just not. And and I hate and part of me hates saying that it's not for me, so I'm not getting it. But it, but I'm also okay at that. It's not for me, therefore I'm, you know, I'm not I'm not going to read it. I, I mean, I feel like I read a lot of different stuff and would read a a youth or teen book, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, I, yeah, I mean, like, look at Miss Marvel, for right. instance. Right. It, that that's written so well that yeah, and but maybe it isn't aimed at us, you know. But it's still so good that you can't help but love that book. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I am with 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 the book. Any other books you want to talk about, DC wise? Uh, I did pick up uh, Green Arrow number thirty-seven, and Arrow, number thirty-seven. Yeah, every time I, uh, <laughs> I know this time I read through it. It is an all right comic. It is the new fifty-two Green Arrow, and you know at the end they bring in Green Lantern. It is the the Justice League Justice Green Arrow. Um, it's meant for that. It's it's meant to be the the superhero slash TV show equivalent, whatever. Uh, I did finally this Saturday today went down and took it off my poll list, mm -hmm. and it, it it just isn't. It is no longer what I wanted. I got in the Lemire storyline. I really enjoyed it, and this is just so far from it. It's fine. The artwork is good, but it's just no longer what I want to read. You know what? You know what though. I would say that overall, and I liked the Lumiere run, 
Yep. The new 52 has done nothing but a disservice to Green Arrow. <laughs> Screw that character up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like if you my wanted... favorite, I mean, you know, quite honestly, my favorite character. I love Oliver Queen, Green mm-hmm. Arrow, curled beard, you know, Robin Hood, somewhat lefty, somewhat lefty, an idiot with women. Um, I liked all. I those... relate. <laughs> I liked all those aspects. Well, he, but the thing is, is anybody who wrote him well, he paid for being an idiot when he was an yeah. idiot with women. He paid for it. So I, I'm okay with that. Uh, it was a flaw. He knew it was a flaw, and he paid for it every time it, it, it yeah. came into things. So I enjoyed it for that. And yeah, this making him younger, dumber, because I always feel like he was kind of, I mean, dumb with women, but wise kind of otherwise. You know, he just it was an Achilles good, heel. He had a good head on his shoulders, yeah. and you move him into the New 52, and you strip everything away from him that made him something. Now he really is. Well, he's he's Batman without the the trauma. Well, yeah. I guess he's got. I guess he, that's not true. I mean, he did spend five years on an island, a la yeah. TV show. But I don't know. It. He's Batman. He's no, he's back to be Batman. There's one old school comic that I recommend to people that are getting into comics, and that is Green Lantern, Green Arrow. Mm. And, and most, even if you don't like Green Lantern, read it because you Green Lantern represents kind of the guy that's a little bit to the right, and Green Arrow is the guy that's a little bit to the left. And it shows you that comic books, even superhero comic books, could tackle social issues and social issues of the time and take them seriously and do a good job with it. So whenever I hear people say, "Oh, comic books," Shouldn't be, they should just be silly and fun and all that? I go, you are missing out on what they can really do. Mm-hmm. And Green Arrow still represents that to me. I mean, even though I think he's been bastardized in the, in the new Fifty Two. Not yeah. to get too deep on that, but yeah. So it's it's a bummer, bummer, Mike, that it's turned into that. That you have to jump off the book. I jumped off of it because I just I, I was going to save myself being mad when I heard the TV people were going to take over right and whatnot because they just knew where I was going to go and, and with the hearing that Felicity was going to be in the in a comic book and I just don't see the purpose of her being in, in the book. Yeah. It and really char- felt like... That they character pushed, already existed. Yeah, they really just pushed it back into what the first trade, second trade was and really tied it back to the Justice League which we've talked about, you know, the Justice League book was supposed to be something different or should have been and it feels like this is the flow they wanted to go with. Yeah. yeah. How about mm-hmm. Justice League 3000? You read you that, Jen? I didn't I sh- get it yet. I should have oh, picked that sorry. up. My books are so, like, staggered right now. Wow. Dude, Fun that's book. my team right there. That's my Fun team. Book. It, and it is. It is. Those it are is my guys. That. Then they wake up, you know, scratching their butts, going, "Wow, I had this weird dream that I woke up in the 31st century." <laughs> open the open the door of their room, and all these aliens are running by, just like slam the door closed, and that wasn't a dream, you know. So then they're scrambling to get to get coffee, you know. They're talking about the blood sugar <sighs> levels they gotta go eat. It's just, I mean, I love like those the, two. If you like the old team, the old goof that these guys are, you know, the, the odd couple isn't the right no. isn't the right thing to call them. They're married, though. The, the two guys are married. They, they yeah. bicker and, and argue and all the uh-huh. same... And it was. It was it was that. The whole book. It was it was literally just them. There were, I mean, very briefly, the rest of the group is in the book because they've got a new... They've got a new... A base. They've been given a base, basically. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a couple of funny lines in there about about Superman, Wayne Dorini, and the Justice League, something else, which was kind of funny. But otherwise, so- the entire rest of the book is these two guys running around a prison planet trying to get off the planet. So I could just pick up that one issue, and I'd be okay? Um, I love Blue Beetle and Booster yes. Gold. Yes, I think you could. The little bit that's in there that's not tied to that wouldn't be too confusing. You're going to get a little bit of the kind of the arch nemesis of this book is in there. Um, you'll get a little piece of that. Clearly, you'll, you'll understand that. He's clearly a bad guy, and mm-hmm. he has no interest in these two idiots until he hears that they mm-hmm. were part of Justice League International, and then suddenly he wants everything to do with them because yeah. if they're part of a Justice League... Because he's like, I don't care about them. They don't even have superpowers. They're completely meaningless. Yeah. Until he hears they were part of Justice League International, and he's like, whoa, really? But, um, <laughs> and yeah, it's just them It's them arguing about stuff. They think... Because they're on Earth. They're on Earth 
three, like I said, in the year 3000, it's a giant prison planet. Yeah. They figure out if they dig down deep enough, they'll get to one of Blue Beetle's caches. Yeah. <laughs> Some fat slob has um, his dad's a miner, and they found Blue Beetle's thing first. And the guy's wearing Blue Beetle's uniform. He's like <laughs> the Blue Beetle of this time. And 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 Ted Core's like, I can't even believe he fit into that uniform. And Booster Gold goes, Well, remember that time when you were kind of a little on the pudgy side and <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I mean, they just they, it's funny. It's funny. I don't know what it'll be like long term and whatnot, but and, yeah, I'm excited. And, and it's fun. I mean, I I know there are lots of Booster Gold haters out there, whatever. Yeah. These two guys together are funnier than all get out, so yeah. they're just they're they're amusing. I, I loved it. I look forward to the next issue. The next issue is going to have a bunch of them in it too. So, and, I, and the next issue is going to have um, Fire and Ice in it, I think. Oh, okay. You because know, that was, speaking of New 52 disappointments, Just League International is a bit of a yeah. disappointment. So right. I'm more than happy to right. hop in right. on that if that's going on. Mm. Yeah. So it'll be, it'll, it, was, it was fun. I love it those too. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and, they, and, and, they, and they nail it just like, just like the old time. So. <sighs> Now it's well, sweet to have them argue over a movie. And then yeah. I feel like, no, it's good. No, it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of that way all the way through the book, but yeah. yeah. So, any other DC books you pick up, Jed? Uh, I got Paternal. Paternal, okay. We can talk Paternal. <laughs> oh, but I got you. But, uh, yeah, Batman, <laughs> Batman Eternal, for those people who aren't you know, on the weekly here with us talking um, Batman Eternal, we like to call it Paternal here. Thanks to Matt, Wednesday Serial. Um, I'm shocked that comes from him. So yeah, yeah, aren't you? So so, what would you think, Jen? I thought it was okay. Um, it wasn't how, great. How have you been feeling about the about the book? Because we haven't talked to you about the book for in quite some time. Um, I, I really like Penny One. Mm-hmm. Um, Penny I'm two. In, you mean. I'm in yeah. Penny Two. I meant Penny Two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm enjoying it. It's okay. It's not great for me. I think I enjoy um, Future's End a little more than mm-hmm. the Batman book, mm-hmm. but um, it's it's alright. And this issue was okay. It was, it was one of the better Tinian books, I guess, in my opinion. Right. He did, he did a, a, an okay job here. Um, because there's no ending in this one. <laughs> yeah, probably. That could be why. But, yeah, yeah it, wasn't, it wasn't bad. It just, you know... Yeah, I think one of the things I think is interesting is does it seem like to you that as we're getting lo- getting farther into the into this title, the books are less scattered. It's like there's only they only they only address like one or two story beats in, mm-hmm. in an issue. Where it seemed mm-hmm. like when it first started out, they'd try addressing like five or six story beats. I'm kind of and, glad that it stopped doing the scattered well, thing. Right, same here. There's too too much stuff going on, so you really got nothing of anything. Um, I just think that's interesting how it seems to have slowed down. I don't know if that was always their their process or they decided that they needed to do that to really tell a story. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting we're getting this kind of backstory on um, Commissioner Bard. I mean, that's good to know what his motivation is because up until this point, it felt like mm-hmm. he was just a he was just a guy working for Hush. You know that maybe mm-hmm. Hush had something on him, but clearly he has his own motivations for why he's acting the way he's acting. So that's Somewhat interesting. Um, I didn't know Detroit had their own version of Batman, so I'll, I'll be mm-hmm. curious. I'll be curious to see if we get any more of that. Yeah, um, that was interesting. You gotta ask Running with Comics about that. Yeah. <laughs> story was decent. Story was, I mean, not story, but I mean, the art was decent through it. I mean, it was mm-hmm. just serviceable. Tell the story and whatnot. There's some, there's some cool panels like this because the Batmobile is, is being controlled by, um, by Bard. And Lucius right. Fox, Lucius Fox is working for the government now because what? Batman. Yeah. yeah. All these caches, all these weapon mm-hmm. caches, exploded all over the place. So the federal government seizes all of all of Wayne's assets, all of Whoa. Wayne Foundation's assets. And Lucius Fox thinks that, well, you know, they're clearly out of control. I need to do this because this is what the government's asking me to do. So they take control of the Batmobile while Batman's in it, and they're mm-hmm. they're flying off of. Um, like a parking garage through a bunch of skyscrapers using the um, you know the rockets to make it go, uh-huh. and they're smashing through skyscrapers. So this is a panel of 
you know, the Batmobile going in one side and out the other, plus you have the panels in the middle telling the story. Oh, I so like I, that. I mean, it, so, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not some kind of cool panel work as far as, you know, telling the story in a visual sense that's kind of cool in there. Um, and supposedly so, pitching Batman off to his death, a la the last. But you don't see him right. escaping out of the vehicle, so yeah. you have no idea what's happening to him. You would think after the Penguin took control of the Batmobile, he would think of something. I'm just, that's a movie <laughs> from a long time ago. Oh, wow. But, yeah, <laughs> I know. That's a, yeah. I was thinking about the whole, the whole issue. I was seeing the Penguin and Batman yeah. movie. Yeah. But what he didn't realize is he had a CD player that could record. But... <laughs> so does it feel like it's coming all together into like one monolithic arc yet? Because that was kind of my one of my critiques of it is it felt very scattered. Does it feel like it's kind of coming together? I, I don't know. I kind of still feel like I'm wondering what direction this book's really going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's after the whole hush build up and now that's done. Now it's where is it going? I mean, kind mm-hmm. of. Gotham's in a, in a state of chaos. You know, there's martial laws kind of being has been mm-hmm. set down. Um, they literally blow up a whole bunch of buildings just to just to ferret Batman out. The the cops do. They blow up a bunch of buildings, like level a bunch of buildings, just to stir up Batman to get him out so they can catch Batman ultimately. And and, and so and and so Gordon, it, because when I left off, Gordon was kind of being exonerated Gordon, to some level. Gordon was exonerated. Well, Gordon. They have evidence to prove Gordon innocent. Gordon is still in Blackgate mm-hmm. because wow. they gave the they gave the information to um, Lieutenant Bard, and Lieutenant Bard is bad. So <laughs> he went into Blackgate supposedly to get Gordon out, and instead he went and talked to a whole bunch of other bad guys instead, and and is, is continuing his mission to destroy Batman. Now it seems that now they've clearly made it to us that um, uh, Bard has a personal vendetta and will do anything. You know, typical Batman crazy pants will do mm-hmm. anything to bring Batman down because masked vigilantes are evil and they kill and maim and hurt everyone around them and they should be gotten rid of. That's kind of where we're at now. So do you think that this could go and you could have several villains and not have it be one large conspiracy? There has to be, to some degree, a large conspiracy. Mm-hmm. I, I, who is it at the beginning that put out the invite to take mm-hmm. Gordon down. That's still my question ab- about the thing. Um, I'm sure we won't get that till way towards the end, What whoever that is. Um, but part of it is the slow dismantling of Gotham. I mean, that's part of what's going on, is just the kind of destruction of Gotham. Well, and then the other question I have is now that they said they're going to extend this by another year, at least that was the rumor I'd read. They're taking a break. Mm-hmm. It ends in March, they're taking a break for X number, and then they're going to start up a new one. Do you think that's a good idea? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I mean, part of me says, from a business standpoint, probably, yeah. um, mm-hmm. weekly books making you know lots of money, and you know, unless everybody literally is dropping three other books to pick up this one four times a week, which I didn't, I didn't drop four books to to make room for this one book, so... Yeah. Um, am I going to get the next one? Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to have a better understanding of what it's going to be about. Is it just going to be a, a weekly Batman book? No, I'm not getting it. If it's just going to be a weekly Batman book with no real direction? No. Yeah. I got this one because I had the understanding was that this was supposed to tell us a story that was going to somehow move and change Gotham to a new place... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And inject some of these third and second, third tier characters into the DC universe. Get us the spoilers. Get us more of that kind of stuff into the book, which it's eh, not really done other than spoiler. Well, spoiler and Bluebird, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. But, but I felt because I, I'm going to sound so stupid, but I've picked it up strictly for Stephanie Brown. That was mm-hmm. what, what interested me in it. Sure. I was like, finally, she's probably my favorite hero in DC. Mm-hmm. And I felt like they didn't deliver on that at all. So not, really, it, not, not at this point. And then how are they going to use her coming out the other side of it? I have no idea. So that's why I got this. And I'm far enough into it now. I'm not just going to drop it. I'm going to write it out and see what it is. I'm silly that way. I'm one of those comic book collectors, I guess. No, you got um, to. You know, so I'm going to write it out. And and I'm I'm not hating it. I'm enjoying it. But um, you know, it's got some it's got some problems I can be critical of as far as that kind of stuff. So that's why the next one 
unless I have an understanding, some sort of understanding of what's going to be, other than just being a Batman story, no, I'm not getting it because there are a ton of other Batman stories out there, and I don't have to, I don't have to buy four books a month mm-hmm. to do it. Not to say that I'm not enjoying, you know, getting the books just bang, bang, bang. That's kind of fun too, in a way, because it's just, you know, it feeds the appetite to just kind of keep reading this story, yeah. you know. Uh, so I don't know, but like I said, I don't know that I, that second one if I'll get it or not. It's got to have something else going on in it. So, well, uh, Jen, you're getting this too, right? I am, but this is the last one that I read. So I'm behind a couple oh. issues. Okay, well, no, I can talk about that one. <laughs> I like that, that one too. That was a great one, wasn't it? Yeah, I really yes. enjoyed it. Well, I I thought I would, because. For a while now, even up to that point, Frankenstein and that team have kind of not. But you, we don't know what's happening with them, and mm-hmm. so, uh, I you know, and I, that was kind of one of the main reasons I got into this was I was like, well, at least we'll get more Frankenstein, and then mm-hmm. the book has been so good, just with mm-hmm. everything. I mean, I think you and I talked on Twitter about how uh, we didn't like what's his name, Wildcat. Yeah, uh, Grif- Grifter. Grifter. And even he's kind of come around well, a little got bit. he better, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And so, but I, I liked this, even though I felt like they did unnecessarily kill someone off, that they could have just written it that he survived. I think it would have been better if he would have survived and had mm-hmm. to deal with not being a part of Firestorm right, anymore. Right, right. I, I think that would actually have been a little bit more of an interesting story to tell, because that was a big part of his life. You know, mm-hmm. that kind of made him feel fulfilled as a human being in a lot of ways. He's this big college and that big guy in college, and that didn't do anything for him, but being Firestorm was big, and so I thought right. they should have had him live, and had him lose the powers, and have see her, kind of... Yeah, that would be really interesting. Yeah. yeah. I agree with you. But yeah, that's strictly a Firestorm esque issue, and I, it was good. Well then, I'm not going to spoil. But okay. I, like, I liked this one. <laughs> okay. Come, no, go ahead. No, seriously. Uh... Well, no, because there's a lot of forward. Well, let's see. I'll look through it briefly, see if there's anything I really can't touch on. Uh, there's more female Firestorm in it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, there's nothing I would want. No, because I'll spoil. Like, because it's yeah. Because the next couple of issues, a lot of stuff happens. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I can, I can do that. So I think Lemire was kind of giving a nod and wink to his runs on Animal Man and Green Arrow in this because mm-hmm. in it, they're both sitting on an island saying they're both retired from superheroing and all that, and I, I kind of liked that. You know, I was like, Lemire was all over that. That's not spoiling anything, really. It's it, it has its fun moments, and I think if Travis ever gets around to reading it, he'll enjoy it, too. Well, they're still united, right? As if anyone's reading it. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I yeah. don't know what that. I don't know what that book's like now. The first couple issues put me off so bad on yeah, that. Yeah, I I dropped was, it early. Yeah. Well, I kind. Of, still was on the first trade. The first trade of of um, Future's End is in the latest. Well, I can order it now. I think. Mm-hmm. And it's it's eighteen issues, zero through seventeen. Mm-hmm. For, for so you're even getting the free 30, comic book day. 30, yeah, you get the free comic 40, book day, but... I think is what it is. I can't remember how much it is. It's a good deal. I mean, it's a lot mm-hmm. of money to drop at one time. But mm-hmm. even if you're paying full cover price for it, it's um, you know, it's still for how many books you're getting. It's still a, a heck of a deal in comparison to buying it weekly. So. I'll, I'll be getting it at some point. It's it's on my Christmas list, so I'm hoping to get that first chunk of, and so then I'll know. I'll know whether it's. Everybody keeps talking about it being great, though, so I can't imagine that I wouldn't like it with everybody else. Yeah. Thinking mm-hmm. it's cool. I think you'll I, like it. Yeah. It's got lots of fun characters I like, so. Yeah. And I haven't read Swamp Thing yet, but you can talk about it. Well, I think I'm the only one that here that has read Swamp Thing. Um. I have it. So, um, Lady Weeds becoming the Avatar. That's yeah. pretty awesome. It's a cool scene in there. Um, let's just put it this way. I'm not going to get into really into it other than it's going to start getting really personal as the machines have decided they need their own avatar and they're going to get rid of all the other avatars and take over the world. Like, 
all, like all the different groups want to do, except with um, having Lady Weeds at the helm, it's going to get really, really personal. So mm. it's it's going to be interesting. Uh, in this issue, John Constant even shows up long enough to go, dude, you better do something because you're going to get screwed. <laughs> while, while you're standing around playing with plants, all this stuff's happening, and I'm going to go hide myself in a hole and wait for it to all get over with. Good luck. Yeah. So um, it's, it's cool. The, the art's great in it, as per usual. Every time, this is why I love Soul's writing when he's on. Any time I think that something that he's doing is going to slump, he throws it on its back, and it's just all of a sudden amazing. And <laughs> Swamp Thing is perfect. If you read his run from the start of Swamp Thing, you will not be disappointed. Mm-hmm. I love this cover. I love this is the machines, um, mm-hmm. you know, the, their avatar, and it is a, you know, it's basically Lady Weeds. Even etched into her metal arm is her tattoos from her human oh, body. Cool. So, yeah. I don't know. It was, it's a good issue. I, I enjoyed it. It's Things are going to get... I think we only got, like, one or two issues left of Soul on the book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think things are going to get really, really exciting here <laughs> in the next issue. I mean, like, crazy pants exciting. So, that'll be... Um, so, do know. we know who's taking over the book? or No. Nope. I haven't... I haven't seen anything. I haven't looked to see. Um, did anybody read Detective? This um, I got Detective. I have it. Okay. Uh, I I, I forgot which Converge Convergence uh book. I think uh, one of them's doing one of them that I was kind of interested in. I might not be picking it up now. Just throwing that out randomly. So I'm being quiet here for a second. I'm looking to see, looking ahead in the solicitations to see if I can see who it is that's... Well, see, as of issue 39, we just read issue 37. 39 is still, it's still Charles Soule, so I don't know, I don't know who's who's taking over okay. after that, I guess. So, as far as that goes. At any rate, um, Detective Comics. I got the Darlin' Cook cover on this one, yeah. which that's I kind of cool. like. That was cool. It's kind of, I mean, it's 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 frustrating. You have to turn them all sideways to see all these. Because <laughs> when I first saw them, I thought they were like gonna be, gonna be um, front um, and back. Front and back. Mm-hmm. But I turned the picture this way. Um. Okay, so this is the first issue of a new arc, right? Um, introducing anarchy to the new Fifty Two. Yes, introducing mm-hmm. anarchy to the new Fifty Two. I actually thought it was a pretty decent thing. I mean, I like the representation. This has um, the Mad Hatter in it and Tweedledum yeah. and Tweedledee. I, I like them. That was all kind of cool. It's... I'm really starting to like the art. You know? Yeah. At first, I wasn't sure, but I'm kind of getting into it now. Yeah. yeah. Even the fight sequences, which I don't think are the strong points of this book with the mm-hmm. current theme on it, I didn't think they were all well, that bad. I mean, there's some cool glass pages and whatnot. Um I mean, who am I kidding? I'm going to keep getting the book. It's Detective Comics, and I, I always <laughs> buy Detective Comics. It's one of those kind of things that it hasn't disgusted me to the point where I drop it like I did Justice League. Um, but I wasn't super excited with the first arc with the new creative team on it. I didn't think it was that mm-hmm. special. It was. Um, if you like Bullock, I guess it was good. Yeah. I, I just had a weird moment because I realized I did read it. <laughs> 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 That's not good. Oh wow. That's um, not good. <laughs> but yeah, I mean it's not it's not super. If you like Francis Manipool's and Buccellos artwork, it's cool, I think. I don't know, there's some moments here I like. I like when they go out and walk around the um walk around the um Wayne Manor and light it up for Christmas time. I like the mm-hmm. book is actually at Christmas time and it coming out at Christmas time. Sometimes I miss I miss the fact that comic books seem to, unless it's a plot device, comic books seem to um, miss that there are four seasons. Um, so mm-hmm. it's kind of nice occasionally to get a book where you feel like it's a different time of the year. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. I know these these this whole finding these skulls when he was fighting um, the Mad Hatter, it, you know, that's kind of an interesting sub plot maybe that might be happening in there where he's mm-hmm. contemplating on whether or not this is old killings that, that the Mad Hatter has done a long time ago or if it's um, um you know serial killer. yeah or it's something, something different from there so, sorry I'm laughing uh, I just read a comment from Mercy's little show and she says front and back for the for the um, 
for the conflict. Are you crazy? That's that's ad space they'd lose, which is very true. <laughs> Can't lose their ad space. Got to have their ads in there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I didn't think it was I didn't think it was bad. It's it's kind of pretty to look at and whatnot. Yeah. I still I I like the last two issues. I want to see more of that. I have to say the the guy that wrote it and um, Leon on art. I would love to see more of that kind of gritty short oh, short wow. detective that was awesome. short detective kind of things going on. Mm -hmm. That's what that would be my preference. So, but yeah, I agree. Any other DC books or news or whatever we want to talk about? The Dark Knight Returns again. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> so that's been kind of that's been kind of interesting because you know I made that I mean I did my what the few I kind of commented that, that was out there and I had lots of people comment on it um, and so it was interesting to read people's comments on it and how many people would actually be interested in it and and, and I don't think they know what it is yet because yeah. it's anywhere from one issue to a mini series to. But you know I mean I love it when I love it when Scott Snyder throws out there. Wouldn't it be awesome to have you know, have Murphy doing the art? Well, duh. Wouldn't it be awesome to have Murphy do the art on any book? I mean, that, <laughs> you know, so trying to sell the book by dream artist would be pretty, um, you know, it's pretty great. What sure. I thought was curious is somebody suggested, well, maybe they're going to continue the story that Scott and um, Murphy had in that 75, 75th anniversary, or what was it, 900th anniversary detective comics, where it was set way in the future. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You know, in Robbins in Africa, you know, yeah, it's, 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 right, and Africa. Yeah, right, right. You know, sit it there and finish that story that we really didn't get to see. That would be kind of cool. I mean, I would be, I would be excited to, um, you know, to, to read that and whatnot. I guess. Oh man, if they put Murphy on the art, I might have to buy it. Yeah, I probably will too. Uh, but part of me also thinks that it's like, well, it's just a giant. I mean, what? Uh, I, I hear that Miller's not in the best of health right now. Maybe is this just a giant swan song to him? It, I mean, it, I, I understand why Snyder would be doing it because, as a Batman fan, and I and I am, if I was writing Batman, I would be excited to get to work with somebody who pivotally changed Batman. And and I guess you can come on the comments or make your own video to argue with me that Frank Miller didn't fundamentally change the tone of Batman because I, I think he did. Um, I would make one caveat on that. He brought sure. back the older tone of Batman. Right. Batman had evolved out of what he had originally been, and he went back and grabbed that Batman and brought right. it back. Made him a vicious badass, you know. Mm -hmm. kind of a, right. And like him it, or hate him, he did that. Right. Well, I, you know, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of Frank Miller the person. Mm -hmm. There's a, a, a body of work in the 80s and, and that is amazing. It's amazing, despite anything else about the guy. So, I mean, I, like I said, I understand from Snyder's perspective why he would want to do it because he gets to rub elbows more with Frank Miller. I get it. From me as a consumer standpoint, I don't understand what the point of it is because uh, I, what are they going to mind there? I mean, what's there to tell? I, I don't know. I, I'm wondering how many people read the second Dark Knight Returns story that are excited for this because I don't like to bash comics, yeah. but that... <laughs> I'm, go back and read. Go back and read my comments in that video. There are tons of people who are just excited as all could be for this for this book. It, so the, the idea of a Snyder Miller book, they're just over the moon about how awesome it's going to be. I'm more morbidly curious. It's more of a rubberneck watch, rubbernecking yeah. while watching a car crash type thing. Like that's more <laughs> what I'm. I'm like, how is this going to look? Who's going to have more input? Who's going to have more say? That I mean, there's so many questions about that that yeah. I, I might end up reading it just off of that, just to see how is this going to turn out. I don't know. I don't know how people can be so confident that it's going to be this masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it was one issue, 100 percent, I know I'm getting it. If it's one yeah. issue, if yeah. it's 12 issues, I'm going to be thinking really hard. <laughs> 12. Well, I'm just saying, it's Scott Snyder. He doesn't tell anything in an issue or two. Come on. <laughs> Well, do you think that when you say one issue, just like the the usual ones, or like uh, that sixty six issue that just came out with the two face, that was like a hundred pages? Would you see it doing something like that? If they did that, I'd buy it. If it yeah. was a seven dollar comic book, yeah, I'd, yeah. I, I I would buy it. I'd buy a seven dollar, you know, sixty seventy page comic book of, of them. Sure. Is but that something you could see the industry going more towards to? try and lure people in is to make these super books no? All right. 
Well, I, I actually think on some level, and I know a lot of people disagree with me, I think a lot of events should just be trades straight from the get-go. I know they will never do that, but that would make it a lot easier. So if they did that on someone, like just made a trade of them writing something and doing something, oh, I'd pick that up in a heartbeat. Just mm -hmm. to either. I'm, I'm surprised they do the, they, they do the Earth-1 books, quite mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. And, and that's great. I mean, I, kudos to them for doing it, but it surprises me. You know, yeah. those are a monthly book first, and then they put it out in a that they actually are written as trades. As a trade, written as a it it is a graphic novel as opposed yeah. to a trade. Yeah. I mean, for those people who want to split hairs, there's a difference. One's yeah. a trade mm -hmm. where you take a serialized um, story and put it together. That's a trade. A graphic novel is a an encapsulized its own thing. Yeah. So. Um, Kudos to them for doing it. If they were to do that, I'd probably buy it too. I, I, you know, if they put it out, if they put it out in a full, full length trade, ten dollar, you know, twelve dollar, fifteen dollar trade, I'd probably pick it up too. Not trade, but graphic novel. I, but, I would probably pick it up too. And I'll take all the heat for this. For the people that are excited, did you read All Star Batman and Robin? Did you read <laughs> the Second Dark Knight? Did you Ouch. Read? They were terrible. <laughs> all yeah. right. Direct all your hate mail this way. He Travis said nothing of the sort, but he probably agrees with me secretly. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say I won't argue the point with you. I, I haven't cared for any of that stuff. So yeah, I mean, you know, um, it'll be curious if it ever happens. I don't know that yeah. it's a guaranteed kind of happen kind of thing. Those guys are both really busy people. I don't know, you know, how much are they um, you know, how much are they um, paying into it. I'll read it. I'll admit that. I'm curious enough to at least read it. I'm not going to be like, screw that. I'm not touching it. But that really matters on who has the most input. So um, Ryan C. is on, and he, um, he, he says, no offense to Miller, I love Dark Knight, and I am one of the few like. who, even, who even love Dark Knight 2. But he didn't revitalize Batman as much as he's credited for. He just keeps kept the nature back to the roots. Evolution of the character begun with Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams ongoing. Uh, I don't know that I 100% I agree with that. But um, not that I have a problem. I love uh, Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams' um, Batman. But I felt to me like they were taking it a different direction. From what Miller did, but that—that's a, probably a whole other video, all in all in of itself. So, anything else you want to say about DC, DC news wise, whatever? Mm. Let's let's roll on to indie books, shall we? All right. Any indie books, Mike? Uh, yes. Um, I just put it on my pull list. Sorry, Hellboy. Um. 1952. Yep. And the BPRD. Um, yeah, I mean, we've often talked about when can you jump on Hellboy or BPRD, and I really think that this was the, the best way of going about it. That um, you can definitely read all the old trades every once in a while. There's great one shots, but this is a, a five part series, and it's the beginning of Hellboy working with them. And I was happy to read it, and it definitely makes me want to fish it, finish out the series, so it's on my poll. Anybody else got anything they want to say about it? It was fun. I had fun reading it. I want to read the next one. Yeah, I liked it. I'm, I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge um, Alex Malie fan. I like his covers as a whole. Um... I'm I'm not necessarily a big fan of his interior artwork. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, it was okay as far as that goes. I'm I'm curious about the story. I'm looking forward to the story. Um, you know, I've read you know different eras of of um, you know Hellboy, and this is the one era that they've never scratched. You know, him starting out, him on his first adventure, basically with the team. So I'm. I'm I'm curious about that, um, and then I think they do an excellent job of um, you know giving you enough information because I don't know that there's a lot out there about these other agents either really. Um, yeah, so I'm 
I'm I'm excited for. It. I do think it's a decent if you're interested in in you know dipping your toes into the Hellboy or the BPD universe. This is a decent place to do that in. Mm-hmm. I think it's interesting. It's 12 years after they first find him. I I think that's you know it starts to give also an explanation on his aging because I was kind of wondering about that. Yeah, he grows up fast. Right. And, and, and they do. Go Sorry, ahead. I just remember they mentioned in the movie, think reverse dog ears is what they say. Right. Right. <laughs> and, that's ba- and that's basically the case, yeah. He's, he's um, Benjamin Button. He's Benjamin Button, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and they do a good job of, 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 you know, what's their motivation for sending him out, you know, after he's gone. You know, you get the professor basically saying, you know, look, he hates it here, he hates us. You know, we, we keep him basically imprisoned. This is a way for him to you know, to get out and live some sort of a life, so, which are kind of cornerstones to things that happen in the future, or in the current stuff and whatnot, as to what Hellboy's personal motivations are and whatnot, so, yeah. And when you're talking about the art, I I was surprised by, I don't know if it's, he does photorealism, if he does the photo, and then, all right. Yes. That's what I was trying to figure out with that, and then the coloring of it. Um, it was definitely, you know, very light, very brownish, mm-hmm. which, you know, sets a tone and then makes Hellboy pop. Yeah. But, you know, I was never a huge fan of Mignola's depiction on some of the faces. Mm. Uh, that's always what made it a little tougher. But it, that was back ten years, you know, eight years ago when I was just starting to look into comics and I couldn't get past my stupidity on... I want my shiny Marvel people. Sure. Um, and so I, you know, I guess that's why I like this. Um, I wasn't, you know, wasn't even sure what the art was going to be like. So it was enjoyable for me on that. Yeah. 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 Um, Dave Stewart's the colorist. He colors almost all of the um, Magnolia universe. I mean, he colors it all, and so it all they've agreed upon a palette. And that's the palette they just get to use throughout all the books. So any BPRD, any Hellboy book you pick up, it's going to have that that same color palette all the way through it. That's just how it's always going to. All right. Be, which I like personally, because then mm-hmm. regardless of who the other artist is, they all have their own style. But tonally, the book always always has the same tone to it, which I think is is great. Yeah. Right. Jen, did you pick up any any books that you read? Mm-hmm. Get the fade out. How is that? that? Did it come out last week or? I think that's last week book. Yeah. Okay. I hope it didn't come out this week. If it came out this week, I'm in trouble because I missed it. Well, I don't know. I don't necessarily check right. to see what comes out when, mm-hmm. and that's what I got this week. So. So what are you thinking of of it? I'm really enjoying it. I like it a lot. We we get um, in that issue we get another CD side of um of the of the business of movie making, right? Yeah. It was kind of away from where the other two issues kind of went with what Charlie and, you know, just focused on the girl here mm-hmm. mostly and she's going to potentially replace the dead actress, I guess. Right. So. right. Who, who we kind of get the impression that she was up for the part. Supposedly, her manager said, "Oh, you're going to get the part." And then this other Scarlet got mm-hmm. the part, and now now she's gone. So that's convenient for her. Now she can go about about hopefully getting herself back in as the as the next star again. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm afraid to show you my other. It may have been last week's. So no, that's go. okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. If I read it, I'll discuss it. Yeah, I don't have a problem with talking about yeah, that last week. Go ahead. So I picked up um, Wolf Moon, uh, number one issue from Vertigo, written by Cullen Bunn um, and Jeremy Hahn on art. I like werewolf stories. Um, I kind of tire of werewolf stories because they're all the same note mm-hmm. all the time. But I thought I would give this a shot. It's six issues. I didn't think it could hurt me that bad for um, you know for six issues if it was just another werewolf movie, a werewolf, you know, um, story like all the others. This was a little different in that, um, in, in this, 
Um, the werewolf shows up for the three days of the month where the moon's the fullest, wreaks havoc, absolutely destroys everything, kills um, with glee, destroys, brutally mangles everything they can get its hands on, not as a hunter, but just as a predatorial apex killer of everything. And um, the book pulls no punches on it, slaughtering people. It shows people's guts and entrails being thrown all over the place, people's heads snipped off, people's heads swatted off. Um, it's full of all kinds of gore and whatnot. But the unique twist to this is after those three days, the well, at nights when the person turns into a wolf, but after those three days, it's gone. The, 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 the curse is gone, and it somehow goes on to somebody else. And that person's no longer a werewolf anymore, and they're mm -hmm. left with well, all the damage they've done around them. Uh, In this issue, a guy who works at a burger joint loses it and destroys everybody in the burger joint. There is a guy that's hunting the werewolf. He, he's clearly a prior villain. He has a, a, prior, a prior victim. He has a big old claw scraped down his face. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he is somebody who at one point was the werewolf himself, but he talks about the fact that he used to try and catch up to the people after they were turned into a werewolf to try and get more information and has just quit because some of them are in loony bins, some of them are, you know, kill themselves afterwards because, you know, they basically wake up after a three-bay bender of eating people, you know, barf up fingers and ears and whatever else, and then, of course, lose their stuff because they've been dining on people for the last three days. Um... And go on. So, it's interesting. That that's kind of an interesting twist. I mean, how is it that? Um, but it's still kind of a werewolf show. I mean, it's just a werewolf, you know, the typical werewolf kind of thing. And if you like, re if you like reading a book with with the werewolf just absolutely shredding people, chewing their fingers off, and all kinds of nastiness, the book is full of that. Um, it's okay. I'm I'm curious about the whole. Spreading on, and at the end of it, at the end of the book, there's somebody who's actually we don't need to see who they are, but they catch up with our person that was that was the werewolf, the burger den, and they capture him, tie him down, and take his heart out. And they oh. have a whole they have a whole collection of jars that look like they have hearts floating in them. So, you know what that's about, we don't know yet. So, and I thought it was interesting too. The guy who's hunting him is so he knows that it. They didn't do anything. The person themselves that they're infested right. with this wolf spirit or whatever. And even as he goes to shoot him, I mean, he's reluctant. He's like, I can barely do this. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting to see that the hunter is so torn in the thing that he feels he must do, but you know, he's not even sure if that's going to stop it. Right. And he's got that that yeah that inkling feeling in the back of his head that there's a victim inside this wolf that really has no control over what's going on whatsoever. But yeah. yeah. And, you know, he was well-written, too. I mean, where he's, you know, his relationship is... He knows this thing could ruin his relationship, and he still has to hunt. There's still some mystery with a friend that he has who may know more about this. So it, it does seem like there's more. And, I, I mean, that's what I'm learning now about Bun, is he gives it just a little bit extra, but it still makes it comfortable for what you know. Because you mentioned that you know you've heard the story over and over again, right? But right. Just enough tweaks that say, yeah, I'll read this one too. I just yeah. think I think Bun is one of those writers that can write several genres well. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of writers that dip into other genres and they don't do it as well. He can write a silly Deadpool book, even though that's not really my thing. I uh. get it, <laughs> but uh, he can write serious stuff, good stuff too. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and it, it's good. <laughs> you just had to bring that up, didn't you? <laughs> anyway, I've tried. I mean, because I'm a Bun fan. I mean, I like I like his uh, the, the stuff he's written. I love I love Magnino. Of course, I love Six Gun. All that kind of stuff. So I've tried his, you know, Deadpool, Illustrated, and whatnot. And I just can't can't get into it. So, but yeah, this was good. I mean, I you know, like I said, I, I it it was enjoyable. So I'm. Curious to see what's next for it. So, um, Five Ghosts. Can anybody read Five Ghosts? I am, but I don't have it yet. So, um, 
it was great. It's five ghosts. You know, it's the five ghosts kind of thing. He's fighting a whole bunch of, you know, mutant zombie horde slash vampires. Um, meets up with a, a, a vampire hunter uh, in it, and things go really bad for him in this issue. He's infected, and he's got to make some pretty hard choices as to how he's going to get himself uninfected. So um, that, that's all I'll say about it. I love the book. It's just, it's, it's all action and excitement yeah. and, mm. and Saturday morning cartoon goodness for those of us who remember back when they had Saturday morning cartoons. Johnny um, Quest. Yes, I just love seeing him embody the different things. You know, he's surrounded by people. He pulls his katana out and he embodies the samurai and he starts chopping limbs off and, mm. you know, and he's getting overwhelmed. He embodies the wizard and blows a whole bunch of them up with a, with a magical blast. I, I don't know. Here's the vampire hunter. They're just, it's cool. Mm. Like, Moneyham, the guy who does the artwork, just draws really mm-hmm. freaking cool stuff. It's just, it's not a deep comic, but it's, I don't know, it's just cool. It's just a lot of fun. It's it's one of those. I think the only reason why I didn't read it is because I couldn't track down the issues by the time people had recommended it to me. Mm-hmm. I might try and track down a trade or two, but yeah, I've, I haven't heard anyone that's reading it yeah. say anything bad about it. it. It's issue four. It's easy to read. It's easy to consume. You know, mm-hmm. so like I said, if you're wanting a depthy, you know, read, it's no, you know, it's no um, Pax America or Watchmen or anything like that, but. Um, it's awesome in its own right because of the way, because like I said, it's this kind of high adventure, yeah. you know, old school. I mean, the cover, that cover just looks so old school. You know, the Night of the Hunter. I mean, that's so reminiscent of, of old Silver school Age. Comics. Of yeah. Silver Age books, mm-hmm. you know. Um, they they have the nerve to actually number the pages. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. Like, like an old school comic. I don't know. Mm. They really harken back to that stuff. The good parts of they capture all the fun stuff of that era of comics. So. Yeah, I couldn't track down those issues or else I would be reading it too. Yeah. I love that stuff. So, uh, I'm reading Nailbiter still, so does anyone else uh, want to talk about comics? Any other no. one? Anyone no. else get the indie comics? No. Let's, let's, let's talk about Nailbiter. I dropped it. I ended up not picking it. I ended up dropping it. So. And the only reason I dropped it, it wasn't that it was bad. I just I felt like I was reading a lot of serial killer books, and that was the newest one, so it was easiest for me to to quit reading. I typically when I finish reading something, I have a def, not necessarily a definitive opinion. I typically have to marinate on something for a little bit before. And with this, it's just such a mixed feeling whenever I finish an issue of this. I've never necessarily really excited for the next issue, but I still have an urge to read the next issue. It's a weird relationship with a comic that I've, I've never... I mean, I've had it with a few other series here and there, but there's some about it that compels me to keep reading it. I want to find out why this town has so many serial killers in it. But at the same time, I don't... It's weird. I, I Yeah, it's like a masochistic type thing, I think. I just... Yeah. How far did you get into it? Um, four issues, I want to say, in. What yeah, issue are we on now? Like nine. No, eight. So did they have they figured out who it was that killed um, or made the, the FBI guy disappear? The friend that our main character, the reason he's there in the first place? I mean, has that been resolved or is that the main still the main story? No, that's not the main story. I mean, that's that's kind of part of the backbone of the story, but they're okay. basically, this is a lot of red herrings. Like that, That's the best way to put it, is once you think you have the answer, you don't. And it I is it basically works. exposing us to a bunch of all, all these different serial killers that are in yeah. there. Yeah. And really kind of the sickness, I, I think the overall critique of the series is that we, as a society, have a weird obsession with that kind of stuff. Because a lot of people come to that town like, this one girl wants to come and give birth in the town in one issue in that town because she thinks if I give birth to a child in that town, it will become a serial killer because of the statistics. And and so a lot of it is, yeah, just people... I mean, the museum and all that dedicated to serial killers and all that. And I think that's what he's aiming at with all this is just how we get so fascinated with these kind of things. And Cool, that's um, cool. That's yeah. a cool... You know, if they're if they're doing it well, that's a cool concept. Uh, you yeah, know, no, it, it just 
it, that I guess that's what I mean. Why it leaves me kind of puzzled. Like, yeah, I kind of agree with that critique, and I'm kind of a part of that critique. Right, I was right. gonna say, is that the problem? Yeah, is that the kind of mm, uneasy feeling? Is the fact you're part of that? Yeah, because I, 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 I mean, not to get too much in my personal life, but that is an aspect of yeah. like crime and things like that. Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah it, it, it goes. Yeah, I am kind of, I fit into that more than I care to. And so I think that's why it speaks to me more than I think. I'm one of the few people still reading it. In fact, I think maybe a Mac Hammer is too. And I don't know. Yeah. But I'm trying to think. I think there was somebody else who saw a video at least that was also picking up. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Mike, did you pick up any other indie books? Uh, one last one was Doc Spectre, oh, yeah. and this one seems to be coming out every two or three months. Um, it's Mark Wade, Robert Castro. Uh, it. It seems to also be jumping into this multiple universe that we're seeing in a lot of different, you know, industry, you know, in different companies, because it's the, you know, the robot fighter, uh, Turok, the dinosaur hunter, wow, and this magician, um, Doctor Specter, and then oh, I'll try to think if there was one more. Turok is in it. Yeah, Turok, the yeah, the <laughs> dinosaur hunter. A and comic book that was launched because of a video game. Yes. That's, and that's, it's uh, Dynamite. Dynamite is who does the, uh -huh. the, the the other ones. And then Adam, or the, the Man of Adam, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, in this one, it's joining all the others together. So all the rest of them are kind of running on their own. And this one seems to only be around to play into that. At first, it was great because it was the mixture of Tony Stark, the rich man, and Doctor Strange, the magician, where he hunted vampires, but he used very expensive materials. It's like, no, I don't use garlic, I use jade. That's the real thing. The garlic and all these trinkets, that's just for show. And then he uses a satellite to melt the vampire with the sun's rays. So, I mean, it was very interesting to start out with, but now it's, yeah, Magnus, robot fighter, Turok, dinosaur hunter, Solar, the man of Adam. And him, and they're they're finding out that they're all this team that's been trying to stop this greater evil after all these years, and it, it's been interesting. There's uh, this kind of artwork where I really loved it with the you know these wow. half, and they're like, this is what you were in the past. You could you could become this, and you fought you know some monster you know uh, swamp creature. And you fought zombies and all these other things that keep reminding him. And he's like, I have no knowledge of this. Um, so it's been interesting, but this is number four. And, I mean, it's been coming out rarely. So I don't know if there's some other issue or if they're just trying to let the other books run their course. Huh. I, I really liked it, but I'm starting to wane because I'm not sure where this is going, you know, what they're going to do with this. If they just decided to create this character because they needed a team book. And that's what it's starting to feel like. They needed a team. Dynamite's trying to join their universe. Yeah. So. Well, it's weird but, because a lot of those characters you named are, are, are from failed 90s comic. Because in the 90s, there was a new comic book company every other week. Yeah. And a lot of those characters are just, like, quote-unquote, they're outstanding characters. Or, what you know, the ones that kind of what they built them on. So that, that's fascinating that they're kind of putting them all together. Yeah. Yeah. When well, Turok was the big deal. Like what they're doing is, is they're circling their wagons. If yeah. you, you know, if you put a bunch of different characters together, you're hoping that your audience gets bigger because mm -hmm. I may not be a fan of Turok, but I'm a fan of, you know, the, you know, the, the, you know, the Adam character in it. And so I'm getting it for that, you know, and, and so, you're trying to put a bunch of stuff together. You don't have Batman to, to put in every one of your books. You got to find something else, and that's that's what they're doing is circling the wagons to try and get as many fans on a book as they can by putting those other characters in there. And it's interesting that Mr. CDC mentioned, you know, the 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 glut of them in the '90s, and because I remember in '90 90 to '93, I got into Continuity Comics <laughs> and uh, this. Armor was my favorite character, yeah. and today I just went and bought like the first eight at my comic store. They, 
they just happen to have eight of them. So I'm, you know, pulling them out of the box in a hustle. And I'm like, you know, I'm excited. I am now yeah. back to 16 again. Yeah. And I got them all in the nice shiny covers. And like, ah! that, that is the one good thing about 90s comics, especially those, like, you know, like, Mike's comic company. Like they were that there was that yeah. many just out there. You can you can find those comics. They're not and if you you know, that's my era too, so I get exactly where you're coming from. Well and that's what seems so crazy to me is it was this you know, I'm sure there had to be a fairly small run that's the, or yeah that there's this this business came up, exploded, now it's no more I didn't think I was gonna find these comics, so it, it blew my mind that He's like, oh, yeah, they're all the way at the bottom. You have to dig through. And I've never done that. I'm, I'm like, oh, that's what all these other people do here in these boxes. So I'm pulling them. Yeah. Woo! There's treasure. Yeah, yeah. I just think it's funny because that's the era of comics that I missed because that's when I had to not buy comics for a while. And I just think it's funny because I'll get, like, lots of comics, uh, you know, buy a lot of comics oh, yeah. off of um, eBay and when I get them, I'll open them up, and people will use their '90s comics and wad them up in balls yeah. around around the comics they sold yeah. me as packing material. I think yeah. it's funnier. You know, I remember how much yeah you mentioned in your video you freaked um, when you pulled it out, and it's this Rob Liefeld. <laughs> like, what, what happened? To right. these comics? <laughs> yeah, they're all wadded up in balls. I'm freaking out because I think they're my comic books because somehow have been wadded in a ball, and it's all these other '90s image books that they use as packing material. So, yeah. Uh, and funny that's a surprise too, you know. I know it, it's this one series; it's rare, at least to me. And I was thinking, you know, I've seen the other issues I bought of other ones, and it's four, five, six bucks. And I'm pulling each one out, and it's like two bucks, two fifty. And I'm looking at the original price; it was two and a quarter. So I'm just like, I couldn't believe it. I didn't realize that, you know, there was such a glut in the '90s that there's all these still spilling out. No. He that's why I think that I'm different than a lot of people in the community, and I'm kind of indie-phobic a little bit. I mean, I think we're in a great time indie-wise, but when I was really getting into it, indie comics were just, you know, basically what you'd put at the bottom of the birdcage, because they were just so many different companies coming out every other... like. Image was legitimately an indie company at one point. People call it an indie. It's not now. I would not call it that, but there were a couple of books even coming out from them that you're like, this is so stupid. But <laughs> I love that stuff. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, I am now scared. I'm worried that I'm going to open up these covers and reread them and think, what an idiot you are. <laughs> that's 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 every comic book fan does that at some point. All right. You will yep. go. I loved this as a kid. Yep. I, I, this was the best one as a kid, and you'll start reading it and you'll be like, oh boy. <laughs> Go read Secret Wars if you've never read it. I oh, thought yeah. that was I thought that was groundbreaking stuff when I was a kid. I was right. like, oh my, all the characters coming together. Yeah, yeah. All that. And if you Dude. read it now, it hasn't aged well. All right. <laughs> all right. And so people are going to roast me for saying that, but yeah. when I read it as a kid, it was the best thing ever. Yep. Which well, good thing it's coming back around then. <laughs> I'll briefly touch on a couple of the comics that I did read. Um, the Humans. Um, I, I think I'm getting another issue of this. If I'm getting it, I can pretty much tell you I'm not reading it. It will just go in a bag and go in a box, and that's where it'll stay. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, like nothing about it. It really is a 1970s um, biker gang exploitation comic version of a movie. It is is what it is. Guy comes back from the army. He's not the guy he was. You know, he's part of a biker gang. I, I don't know. I just. I have actually why heard that, that book isn't very good. Why it's awful. Why yeah. are they, why are they monkeys? There's no. I mean, why are they? There's nothing. There's. I mean, other than it's just a. It's a gimmick. Yeah. There's not. It's not like that is anything because they don't. They don't talk any different. They don't act any different. They don't think any different. It's like I said. It's the it's the early '70s biker gang exploitation film done in comic version. Do you and know, I, with them being monkeys, is there things they can they are allowed to do like physical violence and sex? You know, like you're allowed to do anything to a Nazi in a comic book or a or a video game because uh -huh. they're like considered not people. 
are they? Do you think they're doing that with the monkeys? That there's things they can get away with. They're they're humanized. The, 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 it's, not like, it's not like it's a. It's not like it's. I mean, this is. They're more human than Planet of the Apes, a la 1970s. Okay, sure. not not the Planet of the Apes movies we have now, but the old ones, um, the originals. They there's nothing about these characters. They're they have monkey faces, extra hairy arms. And one of them has a fetish for shaved um, monkeys. Oh but my! They're all, and they're oh. all like, and they're all like, oh, he's he's a pervert because he, you know, he likes them smooth. You know, that's crazy. But I mean, but no, it's it's. I can't show you the last page. Well, I can show you the last page of this, but there might be children watching or whatever. Um, you, have a, you have a lot of children comment that, on the show. I do. I do. Uh. Uh, but there it leaves nothing to the imagination. All right. You see all genitalia, and it's a big psychedelic love fest kind of a thing. Um, like I said, it's just not it. And I don't know if that's like I said. I talk when I talk about the first issue of this. Nothing against those people who this is their thing. It's not my thing. Um, but I can see that there's a market for it. I can see that there's that. You know, thinking that kind of a movie's cool or whatever, and this comic book fits that kind of a thing. I'm still not 100 percent sure that it's done well, though. You know, yeah. that it's trying to hit this, trying to hit that kind of a mark, and I'm not sure it's really doing it well. I don't know. I I did not like it. I. So you you feel like even though you don't like it, what it's trying to achieve, it didn't even achieve. What I it was don't trying. think I don't think it was successful at being that. I don't think it was mm-hmm. truly successful at being the kind of like if you were doing a, a fake documentary or the first issue felt like a fake documentary of a 1970s biker gang kind mm-hmm. of a thing. So you're kind of seeing the inside workings of, you know, against the man and whatnot. This issue, our, our rebel went off to war. Everyone thought he died, but it was a mistake. He actually lived. He's walking back into town. You know, he's the biker dude. The, the sheriff shows up and tells him, you better not me- – you're back, Johnny. You better not mess around in our town. You know, and he's like sticking it to the man, kind of a thing. Goes back to the clubhouse. You know, it's a big giant party. He's angst written because he saw all this stuff while he was over in Nam fighting commies. You know, that makes him all kind of jittered and what. I, it is so stereotypical that kind of a movie of the seventies. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. I, it, it, I mean, it, there's nothing about it that's anything other than their other than their their monkeys. There is nothing about this that has an original voice to it at all. It, there's nothing, nothing, and that's it's, what frustrates me. If it was trying to like turn something on its ear, doing this, I could appreciate it for that. But it's not even doing that. It's just, I swear to God, I can't name the movie, but I have seen this movie. I know I have as a kid. I know I've seen the movie. No, it, maybe it, didn't, it maybe didn't have all the nudity and swearing in it that this has in it, because I'd really remember it then. But. Um, <laughs> But, no, but there's a there's a ton of those you know movies that were out at that time. No, it's 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 cliche for sure. Right, if it if flirts that whole Billy Jack, you know, I'm, a, you know, on the, you know, spiritual ex Vietnam, you know, half Indian fighting the bad, you know, fighting the man because the man's the bad guy. I don't know. It's just the whole that, whole, yeah, whatever. Has exploitation filled to it almost. Yeah. Sense. Yes, and I've spent way too long talking about it for what it was worth. So. <laughs> Still my favorite book. My favorite book, Low, number five. I, I love, 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 love this book. I have that. Uh, I, I love the way it looks. I love every ounce of art that's in it. Mm-hmm. I, I love – this book concentrates so hard on this whole idea of being optimistic and 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 I, I, I don't know. Um, hard to explain, but I just – I completely love it. Well, I think and, what I, I'm loving, and especially just in this issue – because you touch on optimistic, is I think a lot of the science fiction that we read nowadays has a very negative, very dystopian, uh, fatalistic yeah. view to it. And when you and I were kids, I mean, it was two different things. But Star Trek, where they were like, no, like the future, we're going to be building... Everything's a utopia, yeah. Yeah, and so it's kind of cool that there's at least a little glimmer of that in this. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's it, I, you're starting to swing me, because I did at one time say black science was better in my opinion. This is staying consistent, staying good, loving the art, and it's doing something different compared to all the other science fiction I'm reading right now. Yeah, it's got a different voice. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So, uh, yeah, very good. Yeah. Everyone should be reading low. Unless you don't like science fiction, and then, yeah, stay away. Then I don't want to have anything to do with you, so... Yeah, that's right. Why are you watching? <laughs> yeah. Are they still sticking with that original family in the suit? Yes. Right. yes, they are now They are now on a pirate, basically a pirate um, city. They're stuck there. They've been there for four months now. They found the daughters that were kidnapped and all of that. Um, the mother is basically, they're trying to break her because she knows there's this probe out there somewhere that said that there's a place where there's fresh oxygen, blue skies, and a wonderful world. And the pirates want that so they can have it for themselves. And they're doing everything they can to break her. Um, her son is a pit fighter now. Um, he's He and his merry band of, of fighters have won... 98 battles in a row without even being without losing any fatalities, and the the head pirates pretty much told them it's been a setup that that they've let them win all these fights, and if she doesn't if she doesn't tell them where the probe is at, this is the fight they're all gonna die in, hmm. and and of course she won't she has faith in in, in her son, and there's a big battle in, ensues, um they they try wiping him out there's some backstabbing going on in it and um, it it ends with hope feeling like it's broken, but at the same time not, because there's this, you know, that's one of the elements that's really interesting about this book, is it has this voice of optimism, and it's not corny. It doesn't come across as corny or cheesy. It's not a let's smile and and, and put on the bright, cheery face. No. it's This is going to be really hard. This is going to be yeah. horrible, but I know if I keep going it we're we're gonna make it. it it's yeah. it, it has to happen. It, you know, we we stay as positive as we can, and we're gonna. You know, it's not. It's it's good. It's really good the way it's done. Well, yeah, you you can't have like a kumbaya type hope and have it be serious. You have to have great adversity faced by the character for the hope to kind of because you want to be able to read that and be like, I wouldn't be able to have that kind of hope if I was in that situation. Yeah. And that's when they go, oh, no, I do have hope in that situation. That's what makes it interesting. Right. right. And I, it's, just, it's, just, it's just, yeah. Because yeah. it's horribly bad. It's horribly bad. And you're like this, I mean, it's like, ugh. I mean, it's, you think about this family, their situation. I mean, the, 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 daughter, the daughter almost slits her throat at one point in this issue. I mean, that's how brainwashed she is into thinking that they're the bad guys and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and all this. And, I, and, I, and to some degree, I can understand why she feels the way she does. Because from her perspective, her family forgot about her. They decided that it wasn't worth trying to save her, and that's why she's been where she's at for so long. So screw you, I'm going to go with what I know, and what's what's working for me, I'm basically the adopted daughter of the head honcho. I'm living high on the hog. You know, I'm not going back with my parents who forgot about me or left me to whatever horrible things happened to me and my sister. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's cool, and the art is just enough different than everything else that's out there that really rich and really cool. Yeah. Next issue is issue six. That'll be the end of the arc. Um, so then you, I would assume by January we'll see the first trade for those people who are might be interested in that in that end of it. Um, so yeah. What I'm wondering is how how much is the first issue selling for on eBay? Because <laughs> it should be for a lot, if you ask yeah. me. I have no idea. No idea. Someone www dot that while we're talking <laughs> comics. Yeah, low number um, one. But I'll be curious, you know, because at this point, number five of Black Science. You were talking about Black Science. We're kind of comparing the two, or which we think was better, whatever. Mm -hmm. Number five of Black Science. We were still really high on Black Science too, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll see once we hit the second arc, because I'm still really liking Black Science. But Black Science, to me, where it's at right now, kind of it it plateaued. Yeah. Um, for me, not that it's bad, but it plateaued. Whereas up until that point, it just felt like every issue was ramping up in comparison to the next one. So now it's plateaued. How far and low are we going to get before it hits? Are we going to are we going to hit the second? You know, make the first the first the first um, trade super exciting. So you're you're all bought into the book, right? We're not going to we're not going to drop Black Science now. Nope. You know, so now we can you know, but now they can mellow out flat you know plateau out and you know stretch things out a little more or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think you know from a business standpoint, what is that? You know, what does that do for us and whatnot? Mm -hmm. So be curious to see. But Rick Remender's writing awesome um, 
indie stuff. Indie books right now. Those three, you know, uh, Deadly Class, Woe, and and Black Science are just all all knocking it out of the park, and all feel very different from each other. So, yeah. yeah. You would think Marvel would be like, "Hey, why aren't you writing stuff like that over here? Maybe we I, should get out of the way." <laughs> really? I don't think they're thinking that at all. I, you know, they should be. Well, no doubt. <laughs> Oh well, yeah. I think I, you know, I don't know from listening to the diehard, um, you know, Captain America fans, that last Number volume, one. the last volume of of Captain America, um, that he wrote was kind of out of the box. You know, him basically being thrown in Dimension Z and it basically being kind of more of a sci-fi esque. Yeah. I mean, they still kept some of the notes of of Captain America, but it, uh-huh. from what a lot of the fans talk about, it's definitely different. So well, maybe that's as close as they're going to let him get. That's what I was kind of wondering, because I saw like an online campaign to get him off the book, so I was like, wow. <laughs> well, that online com- campaign, that started, did that start way back then, or did that start after people freaked out because they thought that that um, the Falcon was sleeping with an underage Jet Black? You're teaching me here. After, I, I, after I just... <laughs> that, whole, that whole Fire Rick, that whole Fire Rick Remender thing that was going on yeah. for a while, that whole pile of Yes. Anyway, I, I didn't know it was over because I wasn't reading Captain America. Yeah, yeah, and that's what that was about. That was about the fact that somebody got it in their head that he had liquored her up on wine and then slept with the underage. Which to me, if you read the book, she clearly, she clearly um, is not underage, yeah. and she's clearly saying, "Let's drink some wine and have a good time." It was completely instigated by her, probably more so that. They both got liquored up, and she took advantage of him more than uh-huh. he took advantage of her. Because he woke up the next morning and went, "Whoa, what happened?" Yeah. And she's like, "Yeah, let's do it again." So I don't, you know. <laughs> well, what, what made him think that she was underage? I don't know. Huh. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, because you were reading that run, and you were kind of on the fence every time I talked to you about it. So I wasn't sure. Yeah, well, there was parts of it I really liked. I liked it when they were in Dimension Z. That was all cool. I liked some uh-huh. of the characters going out of that. They, then they got into too much of the shield stuff, the shield, and I. Mm-hmm. The, the last arc, the last arc that happened before that run was done, the um, the nail, it's something nail, the iron nail or something like that. That arc was was not enjoyable, I, I for me. So. Did you read this first issue of the new one? No. No, because okay. what is at that point the story that I wanted to to know about? I want to know about. Depowered old man Steve Rogers. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm more interested in him. The part of the last run that I liked was the kind of the almost broken man that comes mm-hmm. out of Dimension Z, having lost ten years, having lost his child that he basically his kid he raised from, you know, baby from infant, mm-hmm. you know, all of that. Him coming back and and them kind of playing with the whole a man at a time thing again. I liked mm-hmm. that, and they kind of. That all came to a screeching halt. They did the they did the shield, iron nail thing, and and then passed in and then him losing his powers, uh-huh. and and then him passing it on to, to the Falcon. Yeah. Um, and I'm not interest. I mean, I'm not interested in the the Falcon Captain America because as a whole, I'm not interested in Captain America. I'm interested. Yeah. In, I'm interested in Steve Rogers and what that story was going to be, and that's not the story we're going to be told. We're getting told the clearly. The superhero story, as opposed to the man story, and, I, and I'm interested in the man story. So, it, it's so weird, yeah, because he's a Steve Rogers, is essentially a tactician in Axis. He's one of the few people that didn't get flipped, right? And and he's just like, when you get this feeling, like, when will this ever end? He's so like grizzled now, and it, it, it's great. Yeah. He's he, he's good in that. I wish there was more of him in that, but. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Okay, any other any books you want to talk about? I have others, but I haven't gotten them read yet, um, so I'm not even going to show them or talk about them at all. Um, catch those in some other reviews, I guess. Any other news or comic dumb type stuff we want to talk about? Or mm, no, I can't think of anything. And I can't think of anything I'm excited that's coming up that's new that I've just recently seen. I can't think of Bitch anything. Bitch Planet. Like... Oh yeah, next week. Next mm-hmm. week, Bitch Planet. I'm all over it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get that. I'm really curious to see what that's gonna um, um what that's gonna be like. 
I, I'm trying not to put too ex too much expectation on it. I'm curious to see if it's going to be this uber voice of feminism or it's going to have something else to it. I'm hoping it's not going to be heavy-handed preachy, but be smart. That's what I'm, I'm excited to see if it's going to be smart. Um, Flaming Jelly Bean says you can find low number one on eBay for as low, um, <laughs> see, see what he did there, um, mm -hmm. as 99 cents to $4. Ooh. So so go out and get it, people. Yep, the shipping's not bad. Run out, run out and get it. Yes. But that's they charge you fifteen dollars for shipping. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is that? I was I was on eBay a couple days ago and found an awesome price on some Jonah Hex books. I'm like, wow, that's a great price. You know, buy it now for ninety nine cents. I got all excited and then looked. The shipping was twenty one dollars. Within the continental United in, States. In the United States, it was like from Michigan or something. They're still paying for the Pony Express ride. I guess. Jeez. Gem in the Holograms. There's going to be a Gem in the Holograms comic book, right? Says Mercy's little show. We all excited for that? Or is that, is that too, or is that too um, late for you guys as far as cartoons? Yeah. Gem in, the, Gem in the Holograms. The Holograms I liked. I wasn't a big fan of Gem. So. Ah, okay. So the band was cool. Just She was a little, yeah. little, too, a little too prima donna. Yeah, yeah. I remember Jen the hologram. Certainly wasn't when I was a child, but um, I, I I distinctly remember missing a few um, college courses probably because I was sitting around watching that instead of going to <laughs> going to school. But um, yeah, so I'll be curious to see see that that Jim and the holograms. I don't know. I, I want more. I want more. Um, Josie and the Pussycats. But what can I say? Um, <laughs> but you don't like Josie and the Pussycats? That's a long story, and I think we're okay. running out of time. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I think that's it for tonight. We, this is, we lost Jen for a while there. Um, it was great having her back on the show. Hopefully we'll get to see more of her and talk more books as her books become a little more consistent with the shop that she's working with currently. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, um, great to have you guys on Talk Books. I apologize again for those people who I worked really hard to try and get um, invites to, and it did not seem to work. It seems like most every week... I seem to have a problem in some sense of getting some people on. And and this was another weird week where I, I couldn't even get invites sent to people most of the time. So, anyway, uh, that being said, thanks for coming on, guys. And um, maybe I'll see you next week to talk more comics. Have a good evening, everybody. Later. <laughs>